Yes, sir. <coughs> Call a meeting of North Reading School Committee to order for September 25th, 2017. First order of business is public input. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Bridget is here tonight. Bridget grew in place of Gerilyn. Okay. So no public input. Mr. Bernard, I'll let you introduce Bridget since I'm-, I'm Certainly, not. yes. I, uh, it's, it's, I'm glad Bridget is here tonight making her first uh, presentation to you all. Uh, Bridget is a sophomore at the high school and newly elected student representative to the school committee. And I appreciate Bridget pinch hitting tonight for Gerilyn who had uh, soccer, a, a right? soccer game that yeah. was not on the schedule playing. And she, she is back, but I think she was smart to, to ask Bridget <laughs> to fill in for her. So. I think so Bridget is here and I think she's, uh, we met today and I think she's very well prepared for a presentation tonight. Just so. one quick note before Bridget starts. She's a sophomore. So she spent one year in each of the three different middle schools that we had. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so she's been in five, she was in five schools in five years. Because this year's fifth grade mm. to the ninth grade. This year's freshman class is the first that'll be here Exclusive. all four years, yep. right? Yep. The same class. Yeah. 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 Bridget, go ahead. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here, especially following in Jerlyn's shoes, if she would mm. be. Um, so we had a wonderful transition to the school year. It went very smoothly, as it always does. Um, I think everyone's adjusted to their class schedules and the new building for the freshmen. Um, no one's walking around with their schedule anymore, so we can assume we know where we're headed. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of changes this school year. One of the bigger ones was the use of Plus Portal um, instead of Edline. Both are online grade tracking systems. Um, Plus Portal is much more updated and an easier to use interface, so we found it very accessible for both parents and students. Um, I can say for myself, it's very easy to access on your phone, which is great when you're going to talk to a teacher about a grade or something, you can pull it up right there, which is very helpful for sure. Um, college visits have started during Power Block, so representatives from various schools come. Today was Framingham State University. so. It's great for the seniors to have an opportunity to learn about a school without having to visit there, if they're maybe on the fence with it or not. Um, and everyone I've talked to has said they've been very helpful and kind of helps guide the decision. Um, there's been a whole lot to register for, especially as you can imagine in these first few weeks. Um, we had the club fair just recently, which was held in the library. So the officers from the various clubs are there to explain to the freshmen and anyone looking to join a new club sort of what the club is about, what you can expect for meetings, and it's a great time to get to know some of your fellow students and also learn about <coughs> the clubs. Um, registration for the PSATs and SATs, which will be held in October and November, has started. Um, I think everyone's excited and nervous about that, but it's good to check that box um, and learn about the testing you'll be doing, for sure. Freshman elections were held today, and the results were announced at the end of school. So the president for the class of 2021 is John Tramontosi. The vice president is Rodella Alam. The secretary is Jakey Remo. And the treasurer is Sam McGeehy. I think I pronounced that incorrectly, so. No, that's right. OK, good. <laughs> um, so we're very excited to welcome them to the student class officers. They sometimes work the, with student council, but those are separate entities. Um, so they're obviously very excited for the fundraising and the social events that they'll be bringing to their class. <coughs> um, we have a National Mer Merit Scholar semi-finalist, um, Caitlin Galvin, who's also a student rep, so you'll be seeing her soon, I'm sure. And that's based on PSAT scoring. And she's currently a senior, so she took that last year in her sophomore year. Um, additionally, we just had back to school night last Monday, which was an excellent opportunity um, for the parents to come in, meet teachers, see the classroom, and go through their children's schedules so they kind of get an idea when someone's talking about a teacher or a class, they know what's going on. Um, I know my mom said it was super helpful and she enjoyed the evening for sure. And then also we have President's Volunteer Award recipients. So we actually had one gold recipient. I think I can answer it, I'll answer it this way. I think that um, they believe, Gilbane has, has stated that they believe that the work is, you know, was, it met specifications, okay, both in the quality of what was done and, and, and how it was done, the workmanship, so to speak. So I would say that's their position, okay? 
because the town and the through the SSBC, the town through the SSBC feels as though um, that may not be an acceptable explanation, and but also sees the need to to resolve it because we don't know how it will play out if that it is determined that that isn't a reasonable explanation. The SSBC wants to address the cracks now so they don't become worse down down the road, which is potentially is a possibility because if water gets in over the winter and it freezes, expands the cracks, and now you have a bigger problem. The, the point of allowing uh, Gilbane to come out and document it is if the, if the town does challenge the um, explanation given to us by Gilbane, <coughs> we felt as though there was a need for, to give them an opportunity to document for themselves for the record what they saw and whether or not that is or is not proven to be a failure in the quality of the product or the workmanship. And part of the problem is the warranty's expired. So right. since the warranty's expired, <coughs> our only real remedy for that parking lot would be to go after them legally. Right. So that's <coughs> what we're That possibility at. exists. And right, the town administrator, open, he didn't make any that. threats, but he made it no. clear that, that I think we, we it, may pursue other actions. We, we wanted to leave that option available right. to us. It's the last thing we want, but it's still unacceptable that that should happen and the fact that it's outside the warranty period. Correct. Well, didn't someone mention that the parking lot down at what used to be the old high school was there for 50 some years and yeah. didn't have cracks like that? It may have had cracks, I don't know. Yeah, but, but I think not any it wasn't the original. It might have had a small either. earthquake or something that caused <laughs> the cracks. Just wanted this, to this, this to, to my, in my opinion, and I'm not at all you know skilled in the area of asphalt, but it looks to me it's a lot of places where there is there are seams where joints met. That's a big part of it, but not all of it. Not exclusive. Not all of it, right? It's not. They're a spider. They call them the spider spiders. cracks. There are. There's a lot of spider cracks. I looked cracks at it again tonight. With I grass well coming beyond out. The, but you're right, John. The seams yeah. are the primary. No, it's, it's not all. It's well beyond the seams. No. It shouldn't be happening at the seams either. No. And I'm, I'm not, not an expert a, either. You know, it shouldn't but happen there. That, that, you know, I could see where the, yeah. there are there are spots where the asphalt meets the granite curb. And this kind of a natural, you know, you might see weeds going. That's different. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about in the expanse of just the middle of the. the I'm not an expert on anything, but I can tell you that when you look at that, it looks like they stopped paving and then they restarted, and there wasn't whatever properly needed to be yeah, put that's, down to that's connect what I'm the different areas. Yeah, yeah. It, but that's they what stopped. It like. But it looks like they stopped on one day, came back the next day, yeah. and that's where the biggest problem. And, and some of those cracks are really wide now. Yeah, and my, my concern, and you know, I had the, the, the DPW director has been very good about coming up here and meeting with me. We're gonna, we're gonna meet again because I wanna make sure that what has been identified in the quote for the work to be done is exactly what I think needs to be done. So we wanna kind of mark them. Um, I think everyone agrees that it, it's odd. You know, right. it doesn't, it, and, 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 and remedying it before the cold weather comes is the right thing to do. And then almost like, you know, we'll deal with the kind of the bureaucratic, bureaucratic piece of it later, but in the meantime, we've done something to prevent it from getting worse, so. Thanks for the clarification. Anything else on the building project? I, I would just add, Mr. Chairman, to your point, if I could, that about the closeout and all, that mm -hmm. I, I appreciate you making the comment that it doesn't, that in no way impedes any of the work progressing to finish right. this off. We're, we're really at, you know, darn close to the finish line right now, right. so. Okay, thanks. Next, we have our, um, public uh, the capital improvement plan yes. for the town meeting in June. Yes, thank, thank <coughs> you. So as a follow-up to the September 11th capital improvements plan presentation in, in five-year um, capital improvement plan that was presented that evening, uh, we are asking the, the committee to review and consider endorsing or improving the list, the administration's um, list of projects to put forth to the next round of review which these projects would then go to the capital improvement planning committee the CIPC and the CIPC as a reminder is now looking at projects for the next three years so what the administration has done is it has um, and they, the CIPC does ask that these projects do be submitted in a priority order by year so what the administration has done is it, it's taken a look at the projects that were presented at the September 11th meeting that are included in our five-year plan obviously we're looking at the the first three years at this point and we have prioritized those list of projects and requests um, really with an eye on projects that would have the greatest educational impact on on student learning as well as projects that would also with an eye and focus on overall um, you know safety of both students staff and the public so uh, Fiscal 19, which is really the projects for next fiscal year, I would say that 
is the list of products that the CIPC will spend about 80% of its time reviewing and discussing and, and so forth. Um, we certainly heard a lot of your feedback from, from the last meeting, and I certainly appreciate a lot of the comments and discussion that took place at the conclusion of the presentation on September 11th. And we have, um, again, included a, a recommended priority order, but it's certainly you know, you know, open for discussion this evening. And um, as we stated on September 11th, certainly for fiscal year 2019, you know, we really so see all these five projects next year as being important um, and a, a priority. So it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to start to, to rank them, but which sounds because we're asked to do so. Um, you know, we, again, with the focus on items that would have a large, large educational impact and then certainly safety as being another priority, we, we landed in, in this order for fiscal 19. There did seem like there was a little bit of a request or a little bit of a desire for additional information around our second technology request, and that was the technology instructional equipment for $45,000. During the presentation, we kind of spoke big picture of what that would look like. Some smart board replacements. This is geared towards the elementary schools only. Perhaps some, some iPad cart replacements and some, but mainly, you know, smart boards and, and overhanging projector replacements in the elementary classrooms that mainly have equipment that are, again, 10 years old at this point, reaching the end of its useful life, equipment that was repurposed from the old middle school and high school and so forth. So. And trying to be some forward thinking, we feel an additional line along with the $60,000 allotment, which we've come to depend on through the CIPC, which has become and will become a heavily focused on the one-to-one -one initiative that should begin this year. I think you know, the majority of those funds will need to be focused on advancing that initiative forward. Um, there is a need for an additional request to, to focus on these other areas. So what Dr. Daly did, um, is he you know, got together with his digital learning team, mainly Dr. Daly and Dr. Downs, and they kind of framed out, um, I think it's fair to say is if money wasn't a factor or, or wasn't a, you know, an, an issue and we were able to um, you know, move forward with what we feel is needed over the next two or three years, this would be um, the list that we would come up with. Um, but I think it's fair to say keeping really an eye on being, you know, fiscally responsible or in the eyes on what um, is fiscally reasonable with our, our request to the CIPCs, that is why we're taking the approach of the $45,000 line item and adding that line item on an every other year basis and keeping an eye on that, that would be one source of funds that we could accomplish this. The other source of funds could be certainly, um, uh, you know, we would pursue any, you know, grants that may come up, we would pursue uh, I think it's fair to say they would continue to be a, a level of PTO support for some of this in some cases. And, you know, there are some small uh, line items available at the moment in the general fund, but obviously we haven't started our, our, our um, budget development process for next year. That would, could be another, uh, you know, pocket of funds we could look to accomplish this. But I think it's fair to say with what's available to us right now, there is a need for an additional funding source, and we think you know this is one way to accomplish this. Um, so what Dr. Daly did, just I think that the information was there in your packet, was he sort of framed out the three areas of need in this area, one of which being mobile devices and, and iPad carts um, at each school, the second area being smart board technology and projectors um, at each school, and the third area, continuing with some Chromebook cart initiatives and so forth at the elementary schools, with the understanding that that $60,000 allotment, certainly over the next few years, will be mainly focused on the one-to-one -one initiative that we know is beginning at the, at the seventh grade level, at the middle school level mainly. So um, I hope that provides some context to what that request, that line item is. Um, and so that we, the administration at least ranked certainly those two at the top, um, keeping an eye on what the classroom needs are, but we don't want to minimize the importance of what we saw as item, you know, what's third on our list here, which is a little school gym floor replacement. Um, we've had this on our list for a few years. We know this needs to be accomplished. Um, and then the little school paving project, I think it was clear, I think there was resounding support 
over the need to address the, the parking lot situation at the little school. And then I think the multifunction activity vehicle is just, you know, has a very small, you know, payback in year, you know, three or four years we're looking at, um, you know, that, a payback period. So, you know, the, this, is, just, at this point I'll kind of open up to discussion and um, for fiscal 19, um, you know, fiscal 20 and 21, again, we kind of followed that same approach to, to sort of safety and educational impact with computers and technology items being at the top and then the really high priority um, facility needs and then keeping in line with our, our vehicle replacement schedule going, um, going forward. Um, so any questions, questions or comments? On that? Ready? I have a, <coughs> I, mean, I, I, I think, I mean, I appreciate the work. I appreciate the um, further information on the technology instructional equipment. <coughs> I, I, I think it's really hard to try to plan and figure out exactly what you need, and it's hard to prioritize within that because, I mean, how do you prioritize the gym floor versus mm -hmm. smart boards? I mean, it's, it's hard, but mm -hmm. I have two specific issues. I'll use the one that people aren't expecting first. Um, in, in 20, the Hood School Modular de Demolition, it, it seemed like last week when we were talking, they thought that maybe they could keep them for a little bit longer. Yeah. They're, they're able to get some income for us. That we can keep some students in district by you know, them being there. So yeah. I'd be very concerned about paying to remove them if they're still operational and if we were getting yeah, that's a from good, them. Can I speak to that a little bit? Because we did get a little bit of an update. I think I said on the, re, the assessment that was done with that report had just come in that, day, that morning of the meeting on the September 11th. So we have had an opportunity to review that report a little more thoroughly. And I think it's fair to say that, that through some small investment and some maintenance needs, at the hood, at the hood uh, modular units, um, it's we could certainly expand the, the use, uh, the the life of that of of those units. So I think I kept it on fiscal 20 as sort of a, a line item placeholder. But I anticipate if we're able to address some of the the smaller maintenance needs to the outer structure, um, you know, mainly that some of the the side paneling and, and, and drainage system of the around the roof, um, we. You know, when we kind of revisit this plan, I think we can get two or three more years out of that, and that can be pushed out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I would I would be against paying money to get rid of square footage that we could use. Um, and then my second concern is just the the little school paving project. I just feel like it's too low on the priority list. I, I mean, I, I walked at the play the uh, parking lot again today, and I don't know the number, but I think with the new with the new playground, do you know the I did, Yeah, I did. So that was a question. I did follow lost, up. It seemed like this. they lost maybe like 10 or 12 spaces, and there's just an area that's just rock right, rocks right now sure, that's yeah. not a, being used for anything. We got an estimate on what we <clears throat> thought we could capture for new spaces there. I don't know how many they lost with the new playground. I'd be yeah. surprised if it was that many, 10 or 12. So I'm not trying to, we went around there. I used to park there when I'd pick up. And I, but we did lose yeah. spaces. And I think we had Right, so 10, I, I had Wayne follow up on some of the questions. Um, and he, he, fleeing, he, he believes at least 10 spots yeah. could be captured by paving the old playground area. The gravel. Um, yeah. If we could, you know, maybe 12 at most, but at least 10. Well, that's, that's what I was guessing, and I, and I think it was a similar amount that were lost. And I think I, think I counted about 50, 51 spots when I was there today for, okay. you know. On that not, side. On that side, yeah. not including the yep. teachers only parking. And mm -hmm. again, I mean, I, I will say that, and I don't know if, this, if the school is paying for this, I'm guessing they're not. But I think the traffic has been such a problem that a parent of a student who is a police officer has been coming at dismissal a lot of times just to try to direct traffic over there. And I don't know if I'm guessing if he's I'm guessing we're not paying the school's not paying for we're, that. We're but, not. No. But there not. there is a police officer that's there at the end. It's so chaotic at, at pickup. And again, I just think that it should be prioritized. I understand the computer devices. I don't think we can put it above that. But for me, I would argue for that to be to and respect everybody sure. else's, you know, the, the priority on everything else. So Anyone that's else? just my thoughts. Julie? I mean, uh, Janine. <laughs> Sorry, Janine. All right. I've been all my life. Hey, they both begin with Jay. Exactly. Julie. exactly. Um, I know I kind of mentioned this just off to the side, but is it possible if we are not going to do the Hood School demolition to put off the 45,000 technology until next year, thus being able to do pretty much everything um, is, is it a possibility I mean 
Um, I know I having we're... said on the CIPC <clears throat> that they may grant all five, I doubt it. but chances are you'd be better off to get granted four and where the technology is always going to be there needing to be updated and replaced and, and whatnot, if we could postpone it for a year. I think, we, I think we'd be a little reluctant to postponing that one. I, mean, I don't know that I'm really thrilled about postponing any, with all due respect, but I think we, we have a need now, and I think we're concerned that we have some equipment that's not functioning and others. Yeah, the iPad, the seven-year old seven year old iPads. Yeah. And that's yeah. like having a you know. Carry I know what you're saying, Janine. I have one that's yeah. but, we, <laughs> but we're. Yeah, but the <laughs> apps can't be. No, but can't I mean, I think. Oh, I know, yeah, I know. I can't. I can't do a lot yeah, of stuff new on apps. it. Yeah, right. I understand what this. I mean, I was I thinking think, of just I mean, adding an additional, <laughs> like if we do remove the hood school demolition to add. The Another technology, you know, yeah, an technology. Well, quite honestly, at one point in our deliberations in the office, we we had a, a, an every third year plan originally, right, with the forty five thousand, yeah, and did. we brought it back down to every other because we see such a need. But at the same time, I think Michael said it well. You know, we're trying to be reasonable and fiscally responsible, and say you know, one hundred thousand dollars every year is a lot because the sixty is a is an absolute right. necessity. You know, I think. It's, it's hard, I mean, and Michael said it at the outset, we've really struggled. We even deliberated last week ranking them at all at one point. Yeah. We were saying maybe we should just go in, because we heard you at the last meeting, but we felt like we needed to give you a little bit of guidance, and so we did. But I think Michael said it, and I agree with him, is that they're all, they're all kind of of a high priority. And the multifunction bus has a cost savings as, uh, uh, attached to it, which I think you know, is, is kind of a, you know, a smart thing, and it has, like that, that, it has kind of a merit, I think, that the others don't. You know, the, the gym floor replacement, I think, you know, it, it's, it needs to be done. You know, it's just, it really does. You know, the, the parking There's lot. No question. You know, we've got a space out there that now could be used for parking, but we can't use it for parking, so it's almost kind of, it kind of contradicts itself. So, but I really do think we feel very strongly that um, we're concerned about what, what is on the horizon with, um, with the technology that we just haven't, you know, been tending to that we need another place to because everything else is going into either through the capital the sixty thousand dollars for what now is the one-to-one -one initiative or any other funds that we have in the appropriate line items within the operating budget sure. it's yeah. just not enough you see patrick put together with dan a nice you know it's a, a two hundred thousand dollar need but it's, we're trying to spread that out for the you know to, to make it a little bit more palatable for the cipc so with all due respect, I'd be, I'd be reluctant to take that one off the list, although I do agree that I think we were pleasantly pleased with the report that we got, we were, late as it correct. was, on the quality of the Hood School. But I think we were trying to just alert people that those, those modulus typically have like a 10 to 12 year sh shelf life, and we're up to year 14 now. So it's more, but I think, I think there's a place for shifting that out based on that is. report. Yeah. And we have been spending money there, by the way. We, not, not, we're not throwing good money after yeah. bad, but we did re do a lot of repair to the uh, handicapped the accessible system. ramp yep. out the back, and we're, we're keeping it up. We've done some repairs to the floors. Um, but I, so I do think there's a place for that, but I, I'd, I'd be a little bit reluctant to moving the, or at least advising you to remove the, the $45,000 technology um, request out to fiscal year 19, so. Jerry? Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree that the technology request remain at the top of the list. I think that's important. And we need to be consistent with that, I think, as well. Uh, as far as the, hood, uh, the little school parking lot, um, 10 parking spaces aren't going to cure the traffic problems over there. They're not going to fix mm -hmm. the traffic problems. I agree that we should try to pay, but the, the $50,000 seems like kind of a high number. Is, is there any possibility we could get the DPW to do a project over there? Because that area is oh, not man. that big oh, yeah. an area. If we were to just do that yeah. area, we could, but it wouldn't fall into the... Cut off for, the CI, it, for a yeah. large cap. Yeah. We got an estimate for just paving that area, and I think it was twelve thousand dollars. It was a little under. Actually, well, it's actually closer to ten thousand. So it doesn't do anything else, yeah. Jerry. It doesn't do any other repairs. That, if you yeah. wanted, to, but but that wouldn't be. That would have to come from within, and that's why I think we chose to go this way. I am in yeah. favor of giving some priority to the uh, little school too. For, I'm glad to see there are a number of. Uh, yeah, well, you, you see where the need. Yeah. I do think that the, the replacement of the gym floor is going to provide a more of a use thing than the paving of the. We uh, said it's at the back. Julie, do you see any hope of us getting all of these? With that bottom number, doesn't seem to be out of line. Mm -hmm. I know it's five different projects, but I mean, I, I'm just thinking as far as the instructional technology goes, we need to ha we need to quantify exactly what we're looking for. Right. Have pictures. 
we're going to need X amount at the hood, X amount at yep. the batch. We can do that. Yeah. Because I think this d is not detailed enough for <coughs> CIPC purposes. Well, I think what would happen is this is kind of the, what the needs we are overall. Yeah. yeah. And I think when we gotcha. would typically go in front of the CIPC in like the middle of December, with, and Patrick and Dan would attend that meeting, and then they would break, that's where they would break, you know, spend more time over the next couple of months really flushing the exact plan of that for numbers that and that such yeah year. but it would be some kind maybe of even of bring stuff. some of the devices yeah. that mm -hmm. oh, they would, work. We, would have, we would have pictures we might even do videos <clears throat> and we would we would certainly beef up the presentation right. the way they view uh, things too i think if they look at the multifunction activity vehicle and they see there's some potential cost savings that may play into their their perspective as far as what's important yeah. it's not too are they yeah. do they have to go on the priority list no no so they could they could Prioritize themselves the multi yes. Right, but Absolutely. they're looking at what they we can make set changes. as priorities, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. they're going to take our, our guidance. Well, I mean, it depends, too. I mean, I've learned so much being on the board. Bonding versus free cash. Right. So it kind of depends on where things, it's like a big puzzle and where, you know, With the balance. one small right. little project may fit nicely in, Correct. but it may be lower on our priority level. It just fits. Right. You like know, the how? first two items, they're typically they're not going to want to bond those. You know, yeah. right. you want to want to do those with raise appropriate with free cash, so yeah. that 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 could end up meaning something below that gets moved up based on the how the I funding have fits. A lot of confidence in Julie being able to sell this entire package <laughs> <laughs> and get it approved. Come on, Julie. I mean, I I fear too. Like last year, there was some questions about you know the the one to one initiative. I feel I'm I'm so very it's like if they're going to put. You know, sixty thousand for the com the computer devices. They may n they kind of lump it all together. We don't, but they may look at it as, you know, we're requesting one hundred and five thousand dollars for technology, and not necessarily separating out our initiative so versus sixty thousand and then spend it as you please. No, I, I'm concerned. There's there was discussion last year that the sixty thousand should now be part of our operating budget oh, please. because yeah. we're going to buy them every year. And it's part of our curriculum, et cetera, et cetera. Well, tell them. So in. that's a concern yeah, that, that I have. Thank you. I don't. I don't. Just put it there then. Thank I don't you. agree I, with I, it. I'd be happy. Okay with that. Right. I, I, if they gave us the money in the budget, right. 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 It comes. Yeah. It's just. But I mean, this year it's not in the budget. So. Right. They, How many years have we been doing this? I mean, we've been doing this. Is, we've. Four, this will. It's been four years. We've gotten the, that allotment. I th right. Next yeah. Year, I don't necessarily think they won't see the sixty thousand dollars as important, but perhaps the additional. Instructional technology equipment. I don't know if they'll the fund thing. that. If you also. read that need, right. though, it <laughs> seems to be. Oh, absolutely. We can give a lot more documentation. We can give, you know, we can give years of oh, life. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. we, we can have all of that. Yeah. And I think, I think that helps. <laughs> I think we can put a good package those together. Things. I really do. That's why I would very, with all due respect, I would really encourage that that stay mm -hmm. on the list. And yeah. I, I think it, it, it's, it's high for us. I, mean, I, th I think it's just important that they hear that there's that need there as well. And even if it gets deferred over at the end of the day, then they know next year it can be higher. I and mean, I think I just think that it needs to come forward. Um, so I, I pretty much agree with Scott on the um, little school parking lot. That parking lot was a nightmare when it had all of its spaces. I think if we can get some spaces back. But I guess this isn't part of our request here. But based on what Scott's saying, and I know there's always been an issue over there, but do we need to do something with the traffic issues over there? Or are they not a problem? Are they not as big a problem as it seems, I guess? No, I, I don't know that I would say that. I think, we, we, you know, I'm dealing with some challenges at the Hood School as recent as today. Um, so the traffic here is problematic well, at this little time. You know, I just, I think. What are the issues? I mean, is it is it the street's not long enough so we just have to deal with it? Or, I mean, do we have people waiting on Haverhill Street to go left into Hood and that's, Backing up traffic. Yes. What is the issue? You have people on? parking on Aspen Road, waiting. What's, and what's the issue at Little School? At the Little School, it's everyone converging on that parking lot at the same time, and just the, one the, way, the, the configuration. One way so that that one tiny little. They can and the buses like, are in there. Right. Loop yeah. as well. And where the, and the buses are there too, right? Correct. Yeah. In the loop. Yeah. So we. So it's not. It's 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 just a lot of. There's a lot of cars converging for a period of time. Some people yeah. come a little too early. And stay, no. and they start to yeah. block. You know, so that that's you that, mean like the I people mean, who start lining up at 1:30 yes. for the high school dismissal? Like, yeah, like I know those, yeah. You yeah. Know? Awesome. Okay, but it, five years ago, you know, and we're managing. I, I did, you know, I advised Chris Molly, the principal, back in the first few days of school to reach out to our school resource officer, and they're good. I mean, when we ask them for assistance, but they just they can't commit to having someone there all the time. But, but is do. there? Does it make sense? Um, not just a little. If there are issues at other schools. 
do we need to study the track? Is there any other way? I know we're very limited at the, at the little um, and as to what we can do, but is there any other way we can look at traffic patterns where my, the buses my, are, um, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there, there is, I, but I don't want to make it sound like that doesn't get looked at. I think a lot of it is still, you know, we're very new, recent into the school year. You know, people, people kind of start to find their way after a little while. Um, you know, they might be new to the school with the pickup because their child, their first child has gone to the school now. I mean, it's, it's kind of a collision of things, but the truth of the matter is, it's just a, there's just a lot of cars on some of these er it's neighborhoods like that, that didn't, 20, 20, it's 20 neighborhoods years. that just aren't used to handling that. Aspen Road has become a little bit of an issue yeah, now we, because uh, people are parking on both sides of the road, the, the waiting for their children to cut through the path. The principal sent out an email last week to those parents that he could identify as being the ones that pick up on and just asking them not to come as early, pick up on one side of the road, you know, park on one side of the road. So, so is that okay for them to be on Aspen Road or? It is, I mean, there's nothing is. that prevents them from doing that. Right. There's no, no parking the bus for you at all? If it is, Jerry, I don't, I don't have any reason to think that. Yeah. We you haven't know, I don't, seen. I don't hear complaints. Yeah, it's, it's been yeah. a Our ridership right. is high. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's been slight, the slight decrease, but also even enrollments down a lot slightly. It's not, we haven't seen a considerable drop. Nothing, nothing glaring. It, it may be, I just, I don't think we I have think, evidence to say. I don't that. necessarily think the increase in the bus fee, you could attribute it to that, but I think that the fact that there is a bus fee yeah, and that right. goes back absolutely yes. affects ridership. Right. Because, they, you know, I've had conversations with people, oh, you know, your kids take a bus. And I said, well, because we fall out of the two mile, so it's free. And they said, oh, I wish, you know, you know I'm a mile. I wish I had it for free because my kid would ride the bus. So I think the fact that there just is a fee Obviously, impacts yeah. it at all. And, I, and that seems reasonable to me, that people would feel that way. But I don't think it's anything that has spiked for us. No, I'm not seeing that. You know, that, that, would, that would all, I, I think part of it is I think attributed to the fact that it's just, you know, still early in the school year and people are kind of figuring out the schedule and where they can go and can't go. And, and I know you, you obviously spent a lot of time cooperating. You mentioned the school resource officer with the fire and police departments. Have there been any issues with them or are they kind of working with us to try to make They're it very much working with us. There's been yeah. no negative issues. You know, they, they've reported some things to me. Yeah. I've reported some things to them, yeah. but it's, it's been, I, I wouldn't identify anything as glaring. That's a tough spot. There's 30 less buses. They bus. exit the little, don't they? Well, the buses, the onto, they go to Oakland, right? Oakland Street. Yes. That, when you come out onto oh, I'm, the roadway right. there, that's a tough spot. Trying you to come up the, the hill a little bit, yeah. 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 To the left there and the yeah. right. Well, yeah. even, yeah. even up at the hood, spot. it's dangerous because you're trying to take the left to go in. Yeah. So you pull over to the right on the right-hand side, but people are still passing you on the left and then people are trying to turn left onto Haverhill from Marblehead, so it's a really tricky spot there, too. But I mean, I've There's the exact number of bus passes at the Hood and the Little bought this year than there was last year. Same yeah. exact number? Uh, five less at the Hood, five more at the Little. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only, only other two comments I would say, I mean, I'm a little school, I mean, I just, again, I, th I think the PTO stepped up and built that new playground and that space is just not being used right now. And eventually, it needs to get paved. It, it just, it's just a waste. Yeah, I'm just saying, there's so, an alternative way of doing it. No, I, I, no, I understand what you're saying, saying, but I mean, so I, I just think that, and I also think there's some markings, like, like an actual crosswalk to the playground, which there is none right now, because they just put the playground where there was just additional parking at the back end, and there's no no crosswalk to there. And then now I'm getting a little bit concerned as well about the technology, because will capital improvement look at that and say? You know, this you should be funding this yourself, and now you're. You know, we gave you sixty thousand, and now you're coming back for even more on well, technology. They may. they may. That's what Julie said. And will saying. that harm us from doing this? Then? I don't think we can work that way. I think right. we, have we have to ask, to ask what, what we need. Want. Right. I think what we think. That we need, you know, so I don't and think, make our best case. Yeah. I don't yes. think, I don't, again, I don't. So, the five, is it, there's which five items, but yeah. you know, we're, we're looking at a little over you know two hundred thirty thousand. Yeah. We've gotten we got one hundred ninety approved this past year. Yeah. It's not too far. I don't think that number's out of, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think that number's way out of line, you know. So I guess the only thing, I, I think that, um, I don't know if you can have two number threes, but I think the little school floor and the paving project are equal in terms of priority. I would not put either of them above number two, the technology and structure. we could pave equipment. the parking lot in the little school Maybe we could floor. Pay, right. Pave the say, both. Pave, and, and then. I mean, I can try to so we do it under I mean, one, create, one contract. That would be good, Jerry. Because yeah. you be can play basketball on the pavement. It'd be better than what's in there now. There now. Yeah. You can play <laughs> basketball on the pavement. certainly did. <laughs> but, so do you, I, do you think, but do you think even if you put 
even if you put technology down one spot so they're not both at the top of the priority list to them, if capital improvement is going to look at that, they're both within I think the first hundred and fifty thousand dollars. For me, I think it's a, for me it's a priority. When I see yeah. the age of some of the Education. equipment we have, I just and it, and it goes to the educational value. I know the safety issue is also important. Um, it's a long time ago, Scott, but I lived through and Jerry I think did too. We lived through the little school. I'm, I don't know if you did, but did your kids go to the little? Yeah, yeah Brittany my, did, right? Uh, my uh, daughter did. Right. So we've lived through that, and yeah. it's. We've it's had it at the batch. There was a number of years oh, yeah. where the batch traffic was a nightmare mm -hmm. for us. And parking up on That's the right. Naval Street and everything well, else. But Those makes, schools are neighborhood schools, and mm -hmm. it's kind of difficult. Right, they're right fix, in the neighborhood. That's the problem. No, I, I understand that, that but when there's a space there yeah. that's just not being used, when they paid for the playground themselves, I mean, it just... I agree with that. Again, I mean, that, that just looks... That's why... It just looks well, bad. It's... it's and reinvestment so. into right. the school community. Having that space there is a waste. Can we take a look at that, John? Maybe having some alternative way of paving that, maybe through the DPW for the we, 10 we, or 12,000 miles and solving that. There was uh, other paving yeah, that I mean, could be done, right? So it was. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is yeah, leave the what? priority list the way it is. See if we can resolve that in the short term, the uh, that parking place, area. that parking area that needs to be yeah. paved. I mean, the DPW so, felt it was a little under ten thousand right. dollars. Maybe do that separate that out and do that. Yeah. So what is the difference between this fifty yeah, thousand yeah. dollar project and that ten paving project yeah. that you're talking? And that was about. doing the whole. That was actually doing the whole like staff parking lot area. Right. And it all leading, on, on the other side. side? No, on that, that same side. See, then I think that's a good alternative. To do the repairs. Just, just pave that area this year. But that won't be in the. It doesn't make. That wouldn't be capital. Improvement. It doesn't right. qualify oh, as a large right. staff. So it's twenty five thousand dollars. So we'd have so, to cut off. Yeah. We'd okay. have to pay that through the operating. Oh, that's I, just, I, I don't think we, we didn't can have do that. That, that yeah. was the issue. That's why we weren't able to do it. Where is the staff uh, parking? It's, it's right to the back. just to the left. You look at the front to the left. Yeah. To the left of the school. Yeah. So you the little playground is. You're thinking of all the way around this fifty thousand. No, no, no. We're thinking of the main area, kind of in the area where the old playground was. Yeah. Staff parks. Staff parks on both sides. Staff parks over there and take some of the fifty spots as well. Right, and then the staff parks way on the other side. There's not enough parking for all the staff. We see a lot of rutted areas cracked, and we thought we would capture repairs to that. Plus, there's enough space. I mean, not that many kids drive to school. No, no. Pretty much all. No, we don't give out many passes. I think two or three passes. Yeah. Kids over there. Well, but the other thing is, like, because of how it happened, it's like the spots wouldn't make sense if you did it anyways. It, you sort of need to pave the whole thing and and yeah, do a grand was scheme probably, to redo it. And you, yeah, you almost it. lose some spaces by doing because yes. in order for the cars to back out and be able to ac yeah. exit oh, that's the right. spaces, you, you probably need you don't pick to up do a as whole. Much. You probably right. need to do a whole this redesign of how the parking and restri works restri there, and even and, and even yeah. potentially, yeah. you know, the the loop potentially because. Right now, the loop backs up down the road at times because the loop's four cars, you know, like right there, because you literally come right in. You, sure, can't, yeah, you can't get past them. Not, yeah. And so it, it's four cars around there. I guess then, I guess from, I would settle then, keep, I would say keep the paving at four, um, but do a really hard sell job on it. Um, I mean, yeah. if, I think what's, I'd love to get all five of these. I don't know if we've ever gotten all of our requests. My guess would no, be no. No, that was asked. It's usually one item that's right. not been funded. but Right. Um, <clears throat> I, I can tell you, I, I have been talking with some of the coaches about the, about the bus, the high school coaches, and they're pretty excited about it. Yeah. And then when you think of how we could use it at the other schools, too, um, that would be a great, a great um, vehicle for us to have. The other thing I want to ask, Michael, in terms of the technology, is it kosher for us to provide lists to the parent organizations of things we need or no? Um, to hint? Or do they well, can they come to Michael, us? Michael, you'll have to refresh my memory, but I could have sworn the Hood PA did some sort of assessment with Mr. McKay's help and put a huge chunk of money into this type of purchase. I, I believe you're correct. I believe there was an allotment of money, but maybe two or three years ago, they like did about they, twenty five thousand dollars. I think. I just I just want to remind you though that our initial assessment was over two hundred. Oh, absolutely. So that, that, those we're factoring in everything right. that has been donated by the PTOs, but I think I think there is a place to answer. I know that. we can't direct them. No, but but I think there's a place for 
I mean, I would get asked as a principal, right. was there a priority? Are there things you need? I exactly. think they've been doing that all along. Parents associations. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I, want, I just yeah. want to make sure that the these things really are, if these works. things are critical, when their principals are asked, I'm sure there are other things I, also, but hopefully these are. Yeah. I think we're looking at the $45,000 request plus other ways in which we can, I think you spoke to how we could supplement yeah. that, and I think our parent organizations is one one resource we have available to and us. And a lot of this equipment has been provided mm -hmm. by the, past, the right, parent organizations yeah. to begin with. Uh, yeah. uh, all those a sizable well, not amount this has. Right. Now, but anybody else? Yes. At this time, I'll entertain a motion um, to approve the recommended capital projects, or if someone wants to make a different kind of motion, I'll approve that also. I'll, so I won't approve it, I'll accept it. I just it. ask a question on a clarified question. So with within the i'm fine with the five projects i don't agree with the priority so i won't approve i won't i would not vote in favor of approving it with the priority i'm, I'm in favor of the five projects as, as identified mm -hmm. having heard that i'll make a motion to approve the are we doing all three years we i mean we should because i submit three okay. years I'll, oh I'll then make, see i won't i'm not going to approve all three years if i hit school demolition school, yeah. yeah i agree so i was going to do fiscal year 19 first that's what i, was I mean i'm we could certainly amend to defer the Hood School to fiscal 21 or fiscal yeah. 22. I'm in agreement with Scott, though. I think I agree with all of the projects, but I feel that the little school paving should go ahead of the gym floor for safety concerns. I mean, I, I would put it above the technology, but if, if, that, if other people are okay with putting it as three, that might be okay, too, but... Again, if, if assuming that we're only going to get three or four, if they look at the priority list, mm -hmm. I think that needs to be higher. Yeah. So. And again, they ask us for priorities, right? They ask us they for prioritize list. A, a priority for each fiscal year that you submit, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and 17, or et cetera. Um, but we spend a lot of time vetting all of We do, things. and there's presentations. And, and, and we'll, we'll go in again and, and pictures present. Pictures and... They'll, they'll, met, they'll, they'll visit the little school. Like, we'll go and, and look see at the parking lot. Yeah. The parking uh, lot. Yeah. And the gym floor. They'll look at right. that. In my opinion, yeah. both are a huge need. Um, right. Again, it's hard. it's hard. I mean, I'm not saying we, one we is more disagree. important than the other. It's just, yeah, we can. We don't, we don't disagree. They're all yeah. important. We don't think that. So I, I, I think. What if you did 1, 1. 1.1, 2, 2.2, 2 and 3? Hmm. See, I, I, would, I would actually, I would support um, putting the paving 3 and putting the uh, gym floor 4. Um, I think they, they both really need to be done. The gym floor should have never been put in in the first place, in my opinion. Um, it's just not the right material and equipment, uh, right, right material for a gym floor. It's more like a playroom or something. It's not really made for <laughs> playing basketball or a gym. So, so if Scott, if you want to make that motion, I know Jerry was going to make a motion for. No, I'm I'm hearing a consensus here that I'm in the minority on. So, um, although I don't agree with that, I will support whatever. The yeah. committee again I would put a higher but to, if it makes sense to be all in agreement I'd be in favor of saying switching three and four I think and if we're going to do all three fiscal years then we have to figure out what we're going to do with the uh, yeah module. I, I think yeah. the modular should be moved out of there if and I, the question for me though is can it also be does it would, it, would you put it then in um, in 21 we have a obviously huge no, the, the, even, know, even if we idea. vote for the other two fiscal years, it's subject to yeah. change. When we, right. Uh, I know. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on year three. I, I would just, if yeah, I think it, fiscal 21, that's still three years away. You have yeah. all this year, yeah. 19 and 20. I wouldn't mm -hmm. know if I would go much beyond so can you that. you take the modulars out of there? Yeah. I would put it in fiscal 21 okay. just as a placeholder. And we can reconsider it again. And then you, can, you reconsider okay. it next year. Can we, can we put technology back in there again, another 45000 then? To get that up, because if we remove sixty thousand, we're down to two. No, we're still asking for a lot, Scott. That's I that's know. a pretty. I mean, two hundred thousand is a pretty good number to be asking mm -hmm. for, right? Well, my concern is like the next year we're at looking for four fifty-five right now. I mean, I think it's fair. Well, that we're never going to get that. I, I think it's fair. Is there anything to move up? Yeah. Well, that boilers though are going to. There's no way to do it. I mean, what that what that third year does this year, it just yeah. kind of puts things on their horizon. Um, the boilers might be an MSBA project. Yeah, the boilers could be an accelerator. Depending on how much it would cost yeah. by Correct. going that way. Yeah. Correct. Could cost more. And but we I have think to by, by putting the instructional technology for fiscal year 20, showing that it, it is still a need 
Oh, I see. Yeah, I could. I could. Yeah, I could. I could switch. So put it. To I could switch a technology yeah, and the modulars. I, that evens it out a little bit. Yeah. That's what I'm, okay. Yeah. We're so sort of, take take the okay. the forty five thousand dollar request in fiscal year twenty one, put it moving that in into the slot for the hood school. Yes. Yeah. I thought, Scott, I thought you were saying to add more for technology in 21. That's why I was. No, 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 no. In 20. It's already in 20, 20 because we're taking away 60,000 okay. okay. from are we, that. Are we going to leave that as a priority number well, that, five? That's or my question. What are we going to move, move that up priority. to two again? Do you want to move that to two and then move everything down one? I would put it after the little school. Asbestos? Asbestos. Okay. Wouldn't you? Uh, that that's but we don't have a problem with oh the that's right we're just trying that's to right. do it as a, right there's nothing just, yeah. there's no, no issue issues there, so. it's just for just getting it out of there you know okay. it might be easy yeah. just to build in a little school I think and no and also with right I know there are many members well, of the finance committee that support about that, that. Huh? Many members of the finance committee support that yeah Scott supports that hey and if we could we could build it right under the new roof so we could save we could we save the roof yeah just save the roof school right under we'll have drones holding the roof up while they build the I, I think we should. Is there everybody in agreement to put the technology number two in uh, in 20. 2020? Yes. yes. Okay. And move the Hood School modular demolition to, to the bottom like for now. To FY21? Yeah. The put bottom? It, put it in the last, in the third year. Yeah. Yep. As a number five. Okay. Well, it actually yeah, Because really let, me, let me ask two. a question about those two. If we have to stop using them, doesn't mean we have to demolish them right away, correct? That's correct. They could just sit there. We don't want them to, but they could sit there. You'd have to kind of there was some heat and right. Gas there was some to the utility. But if we're not using them, there's less. I don't know. Yeah. We were I, I we were we were encouraged by the report we got. I think okay. I think we, we we that's two years away. I mean, we were trying to do our due diligence and make sure, and we got a favorable report. So, all right. So um, <laughs> so Scott, since you screwed us all up, can you make the motion? <laughs> so I move to accept the. Fiscal year 19 to 21 large capital improvement plan as amended, and those amendments include switching in fiscal year 19 the priority of projects three and four with each other, mm -hmm. and in fiscal year 20, moving the fifth priority Hood School modular demolition to the now fourth right. mm -hmm. priority on 21, yep. and moving priority two technology and instructional equipment to fiscal year 20 as the second priority and moving the other ones down. Correct. Okay. Great. Can you have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I did. Janine did. That's good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. No. No. <laughs> Yep. And fiscal year 21, move it to two. Move, no. no, no. Move two from 21 to two in 20. Two. Yeah. In yeah. Two. The technology. They're technically the other ones in 21 would move up. Right. Boyers would move up to three. If you had gotten that all right, I was going to ask if you live in North Reading, you should run for school committee next time. <laughs> and I did write it. I you just couldn't read it right. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you should. Okay. Okay. Next, we have um, contract negotiations representatives. This is the year to. I just skip over. Oh, oh. Logical. Logical. I was trying to get to contract I negotiations. I appreciate you doing that, Mel. <laughs> very yeah, excited. I wish nobody had said anything, but that was. <laughs> Budget goals. No, the regular goals. Yeah, your, your goals for the year. Okay. Right. We want to continue yeah. business. And then, and then budget. Jerry, you said budget goals. No, school committee goals. We have two School goals. Committee. Jerry loves goals. Leadership and governance. Document. Correct. This guy here. You should have three documents. Yeah. Puts it in order for us. So we have our goals. Thank you for notice. Many of the goals are ongoing, same goals, because they are part of running a successful school system. This year we have um, a number of new and also some improved goals. The, um, we approved the, we had two meetings this summer, two goal workshops. And um, we spent quite a bit of time on these. The um, most of the goals under uh, so there's there's four areas for the goals. There's leadership and governance. There's financial and asset management. There's the educational program, and there is family 
and community relations. Um, under leadership and government, governance, the under activities, which uh, is the, um, excuse me, under policy, which is the first area, we did make a slight tweak um, to number two, where we are now, uh, the activity is to evaluate the need for policies and guidelines that govern the use of handheld devices. We previously, I think it said, to re review and research other policies. Um, our discussion kind of centered around if we need a policy, what kind of policy do we need? How will we, we need to figure out how are we using handheld devices today in the classroom. Now this may, this may go away, using them in the classroom may go away once the one-to-one -one initiative is in place for five years, I think, or six years, everybody in the high school will have them. But that's, that was the change there. I think that reflects the change. The other goals under policy um, pretty much stayed the same. Um, strategic planning and evaluation, I don't think there were much change. There, was, there were many changes in those. Um, under human resources, we got more specific in terms of uh, goal one, which was to support the funding to hire one additional digital learning specialist. I believe previously we were more general, saying um, hire more support staff for the technology initiatives. So this is more specific. Um, number three, we kind of expanded this and also got a little more detailed in terms of evaluating the need for additional staffing and services district-wide not only for academic needs, but building and grounds and support staff. And then number five, and this was um, a recommendation from Julie, which was received extremely well and is a great idea, which is uh, to implement a program to publicly, publicly recognize retiring personnel. And I'm assuming that Mr. Bernard's office or will handle- We will, yes. Bring that out sometime at the end of the year. We'll Correct, that's the plan, event. yes. Those are the main changes I had there. Anybody else have anything on, on those goals uh, where, we, where we made changes? So the five areas are policy, excuse me, six areas, policy, strategic planning, evaluation, human resources, professional development, and secondary school building project. My hope is secondary school building project disappears. Yeah. That should be the goal. That should have been the goal for this year, actually, to have the secondary school building project disappear off the goals list next year. Then we had um, financial and asset management. And under a budget, there were several new goals. One of the goals was um, to form, or activities is to form a budget and finance subcommittee. And I'll try to capture the conversation there, was that we have a couple of members who are more focused on the building of the budget, getting more involved early on to better understand their, the needs and the wants of the um, school building administrators. And I wanna make it clear, it's not to interfere and say, oh no, this is what we think you need. It's just for us to better understand what are some of the needs of the schools. John and Michael do, and Patrick do a really good job bringing those needs to us, but I think sometimes it's good to hear those firsthand. So um, that's what the goal of that is. What I just mentioned, um, I talked about contracts. We also discussed forming an employment contract review subcommittee. Uh, the purpose <laughs> of that subcommittee would be to basically not only study all of our employee contracts and the, the likes, the samenesses and differences in those contracts, but also to study contracts of surrounding districts. I think that was the, the purpose of, of forming that. I, I think also too, because we have different people from the school committee negotiating the different contracts, right. sometimes there seems to be some I, don't, I won't call them inconsistencies, but different, you know, views as to right. how we handle benefits and things like that. So. Right. Um, then we had um, successfully negotiate an employee contract with the North Reading Education Association, um, which we will probably be starting by uh, later this later this year. Late this I think year. yeah, right, yeah. Our first meeting. I think an initial meeting late late uh, fall, early winter. Um, we'll have a five-year school building capital needs plan. We just looked at the three-year plan, but I know, I know Michael's gonna be working on, a, I think, a, a five-year plan for school building needs, a capital plan. And then um, this last one, I can't remember if it was new or if it changed, but um, advocate for funding to support the buildings and ground maintenance needs at all schools. Yep. It's become, 
not only the addition of this school obviously has exacerbated the need to maintain the grounds, but all of our schools, it's, it's a big chore. We have a lot of ground to cover for our staff, and we only have, what, two people assigned? Yes. Mm -hmm. Outside, and it, it can't be done. So we, are, we, are, we now have a, a contract with an outside maintenance uh, lawn care landscape firm that is coming, what, three, four times a year now? Right now, four, yes. For just this campus. Yeah. Right, just for this campus. Right. So, um, so that's, that's another new goal. So we had a, a number of new goals under budget. Um, I think, you know, we, we, always, we always come in with a budget that's a lot higher than the funds that um, are available early on. We kind of close the gap. And I think at some point, we ha and we're going to get to some of the needs in the next, uh, on the next page, I think at some point we have to really um, take a look at what we can't do without. You know, I, I still think some of the class sizes at the high school are just way too big. And you know, we don't have 40 or 50 people, but we have more than 30 in a lot of classes. And I just don't. I mean, that's the that's the school. We that's the level where you can afford to to have more classes at 30 and over. But it's not. But we shouldn't be doing that. So um, I think we just need to be more. We need to stay aggressive in terms of what we think we need. And also reasonable in terms of working with the um, mm -hmm. finance committee and selectmen and the town administrator. Next is the uh, educational program. We have uh, we we made a, a slight change in the objective, which used to read support the administration in its efforts to improve uh, student achievement. It now reads support the administration in its efforts to maximize the performance of each student in all academic areas. In terms of the goals. Um, Mainly the activities, mainly these are advocacy for the school committee because we don't, we don't, um, we don't teach, we don't set the uh, curriculum, we don't uh, institute the educational program. We advocate and work with the superintendent and the assistant superintendent to, to get that done. Um, some new goals here are um, we actually changed in terms of foreign language. Our goal is to expand the foreign language curriculum at the middle school and the high school. Um, expand STEAM courses, course offerings at the middle school and high school, that's science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Um, explore the expansion of the freshman advisory program. This was one also that um, Julie was instrumental in, in pushing for students at the high school to encompass the students' complete, co complete high school experience. Now um, students have their small groups of students have an assigned advisor as freshmen. Correct. But once they get past freshman year, it's more, it's more of an informal, I guess, relationship, wouldn't you say? Yes. Um, the two issues, the two gating issues here would probably be cost and, and personnel, correct? That's what we would have to uh, look at. Th those would be factors, yeah. Right. But not, I don't see their, no. they preclude it. But no, but those would be the two. Yeah. yeah. Things to consider. Because I think we have the time. We do this during um, power block. Correct. Right. So. That was really insightful. It was almost like. She had a student that was a freshman. Oh, Julie? <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, you, you see the benefit at the freshman level. Yeah. And I, I don't and necessarily carry think, through, yeah. you know, students don't Get have any issues all, going yeah. forward. No, and I think, I think the assumption is, and it's probably true in most cases, as students get older, they become a little self-sufficient. But that doesn't mean, you know, having had kids go through college, they could probably use a one-to-one, -one, I mean, they have an advisor in college, but they're advising like about 500 kids, so it's not really an advisor. But I don't think, I don't, I don't think um, there's anything wrong with wanting to have more one-to-one um, -one type relationships for students, so it's, it's something we're definitely gonna look at. And then um, support the initiatives to address um, social emotional learning of students. I know um, Cynthia Conant is, is heavily involved in this area. I think we've done a lot um, yeah. in terms of uh, some more know, things planned, but yeah, trying to reduce stress, and we've at, we added last year a new psychologist um, right. at the middle school, and uh, I think we also beefed up the high school. Didn't we beef up the high school uh, guidance counselor staff? Did we finally add an additional counselor? Remember, right, about two, two or three years two ago. Two years ago. Two years yes. ago, right. right. There was it was one additional counselor. Right. So we'll continue to work um, in that area. And then finally, uh, family and community relations. There's two uh, areas of activities, which is media and community partnerships. 
Uh, number four is, is a, a new goal, which is um, our activity, which is celebrate the achievements of the North Reading School community. It's not that we ignore them today, but um, I think it's good that we put a focus on all of our student achievements, academics, arts, and sports. And I think we can have Bridget do that for us. Exactly. She'd be she'd great. Be great. Our ambassador. <laughs> for us. She was good. She'd be great. And then uh, this one I know John is, is involved with, which is support the research and implementation of a school district mobile app. Yes. Um, any, any updates on that? I'm, my goal is to have that, if not operational, pretty darn close to operational by the first of the year. That'd be excellent. Yeah, I think that's a that's a reasonable uh, benchmark. And what would I mean? What would some of the some of the things uh, school closings? Yeah, uh, and I think we're, we, we I think you know I'm, I'm gaining some student interest around you know what are the things that they would like like the quick access to athletic schedules because that's updated right. so frequently because of weather and right, just things. Right. Like, I think you know what are the quick things the student notices the yep. portal that Bridget Sports. spoke about tonight, um, you know things like that the, the the daily notices or you know the things you could quick hit. But yes, also like you know, notifications would be in the, the part of it too. The calendar. The calendar, actually, yeah, the calendar. We we've made strides with on the website just in the last couple of weeks. So because there was there was a snafu last week with the eighth grade trip and one of the open houses. So I think like especially if there's an open house for one of the elementary schools, yeah. you really shouldn't have you know, that type. I of thing I I'd like to see a calendar where I, an app where I can just pick it up and just click on the date on the app and it tells me everything that's happening that day. Yeah, I don't know district. that that won't be possible, Right. you know, but I, I agree with you. It would be nice to, like, we have the Google Calendar set now that all right. five schools are on. Yeah. Some of it's a little, you know, it's it's almost too much information because I think there's a lot of things that, that are, that are, you know, tend to be only that one school specific, but it's, we're making progress. And then the final activity under media, which is also, um, in John's court is the um, support his establishing the parent university program, which I believe is your your scheduling for April. Is it April seventh? Yeah, we had a second meeting last Wednesday. Um, you know, second planning meeting, and we're going to that will be for high school or for no, it's for the parents. community elementary, uh, elementary, middle, and high school. Yeah, um, Saturday, April seventh. Yeah. So those were those are the new goals. Um, we have. Uh, um, we have a template here to to follow the goals through the year. I would like to. Re I'd We're getting plenty of notifications. I'd recommend that we come back. Uh, you know me with the email. Six months from tonight, and or maybe even sooner than six months from tonight, and just do a status update on where we stand on these goals or activities, and whether you know we're making progress, and if there are new ones we need to add, or if there are some that fall off the list because you know we've accomplished them. But so I like to set say sometime in March. I think, I think we did that in, I think we did that in February, February last yeah. year, yeah. Okay. So I wanted to, late February? Sure. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments on, on the goals? Good summary. And I think it was, and it was, a, it was, it's a good three, four hours that we spend because we, we do focus on the goals, but there's also a lot of good discussion in other areas by, by talking about the goals. We, we talk about other things that can impact the uh, education. John? Just a comment, and I'm kind of looking for some feedback on if you think this is not necessary or would it be helpful. So what I was thinking of doing was to the extent that I, I'm able to, we, like I sometimes will identify in my report to you what are things that tie to my goals. I was th thinking about trying to list, if I see that there's something you're talking about at a particular meeting, I'll try to identify that as you know, school committee goal, leadership, gov leadership and government number two. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's. So just it'll call out for you that I think it might, it helps me by identifying my goals in, in the report to you to kind of track, okay, am I, you know, providing enough evidence or, you know, giving you enough information to, to kind of satisfy that goal. So if that's something you're interested in, I purposely didn't do it for tonight because you hadn't adopted the goals, but I was thinking that I would do that for the next meeting and subsequent meetings if you, I think, think, if you think it's helpful. Yeah. I so I'll try it. It's a great idea if people are interested. I don't want to make more work for you. I don't. I don't. I don't mind. I think. I think it would be helpful for all of us. I, you know, I appreciate that. I'll try it, and let's maybe. I'll call attention to it at the next meeting, and you can tell me if you think that. Okay. I, I really don't think it's going to be, an awful lot of work, quite honestly. I think that's a good idea. All right. So we'll. I'll do that, and we can talk about it at the next meeting and see if you think it's Just helpful. Julie. So I've chatted with some people in other districts on school committee. 
And there are some districts that don't do this sort of thing. Mm. They just kind of take, you know, I assume district strategic plan, superintendent goals, and just kind of adopt them as their own. But I think it's important to do the exercises that we did to, to kind of what districts? Because I'm thinking of moving there. <laughs> um, <laughs> you might you might run again in another town. But I, I think it's important for us to kind of have our own goals going forward and what we need to be advocating for. And well, I also it's important that we do that. I think the exercise is good because it brings us all closer to the mission mm -hmm. of the school district by discussing the goals. A lot of the goals obviously reflect mm -hmm. the the strategic plan and the administration's goals, but we can we can have an impact by suggesting and, and implementing some of our own goals and you know some of them I'll go back I'll, I'll go back to that um, retirement um, ceremony that's that's something that could be a nice morale booster it's uh, you know it's not that we we, ne we didn't ignore the retirees in the past but we never really have had mm -hmm. kind of a public ceremony and I think you know those things help to implement the strategic plan no doubt about it. I mean, you know, what happened the other day when we did the dedication with right. Miguel to see all the oh, old yeah, that was unbelievable. teachers yeah. back there. It's it kind of nice uh, yeah. mm -hmm. to bring them back. and To see the school, they were all, they, some of them had never hadn't seen the school. Well, they hadn't they were. seen it ever. And there was at least one who didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> John? Mr. Chairman, if yes. I could, to both to a point that you and Mrs. Kopke made about, you know, I, I think it's important for me to let you know that the value that you put on the strategic plan and the, the frequency with which you reference that um, is helpful not only to me, but the whole administrative council. I mean, we spent two and a half hours on Thursday. Yep. Last week, we mm -hmm. all came together again as a follow-up meeting to our summer retreat to make final edits to the, to the strategic plan. So we put a good amount of time and thought into that. And so when you folks comment on it, like you both just did and, and others have in the past, um, you know that's how, that's that's meaningful to us because I think we're we put a lot of thought and time into trying to chart a course for the direction of the district. We've got to be able to fund it, huh? And we've got to be able to fund it. Well, I was going to say I think that the biggest challenge before we before we entertain a motion on approving the goals is if we had an unlimited source resource a source of funds, we'd add more languages at the high school. We'd extend and expand the language, foreign language program at the middle so. school. Yeah, reduce class we'd, size. we'd reduce class size. We'd add more STEAM you know, courses, but we don't have an unlimited amount of money. And, and that's, so a lot of times it comes down to the strategic plan is great, but we need to yeah, cut the class you, size. You folks have never given up on that, even no, though we, we have not have really, and that's important. And I guess that's the message I wanted to convey is that you, you continue to see the value to it. And that's helpful because it does, it's not something that's just, and I, I'm hearing now in the finance planning team meetings that the town uh, is right. is you know looking to mirror something like that? So right. they're now seeing an they increased said that we value. Want to do things like you do, right? Yeah, I don't, know, know, that was I don't know if that'll be good for us. I, I think it was. So on October 16th, I'll be doing my annual update for you all on on year two, and I think you'll see in that that we have um, done a little bit of refinement again. That I think now that we have another year of data under our bell, we're able to look a little bit more closely at high school class size and what do we think we need. Social emotional learning is continues to be one of our goals. We have some recommendations there that I'll I'll be talking about too. So And we could, you know, we could face other challenges depending on, you know, what what our numbers wizard over there comes up with when he does the reevaluation of the uh, of the enrollment projections going forward. I mean that's that's you know that's a concerning True. issue True. to me also in terms of class sizes, mm -hmm. et cetera, going forward. So all right, anybody else on the goals? Okay, if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve our 2017-2018 school committee goals. Uh, I'll move to accept the North Reading School Committee goals 2017 to 2018, and also the Associated North Reading School Committee goals action plan. Yes. 2017 to 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay. the discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, now I'm going to try to follow the agenda moving forward. I, I think there was a reason that this agenda was sent you don't to usually, me. <laughs> you, don't, you don't usually have. I, don't, I, I would never say a word, but I know Scott's always going to say it. Yeah, he I is. I would never say a word if you jumped over. Yeah, something. Scott, if you can do a bit. No, I'm all kidding. I don't know what happened. We don't often have a lot of continued business. I think that's probably. I think, yeah, I'm very, no. very. Oh, it's unusual, don't make it, don't it's make unusual to have three bullets. Very yeah. confused. I think, I think I'm, I don't know, I'm losing He's it. He's out of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, new business, fiscal year 2019 school committee 
budget goals. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, in your packet this evening, um, we included a draft of your budget goals that both Superintendent Bernard and I drafted to kind of start the conversation for your review. I think it's fair to say in, in drafting these budget goals, we certainly looked at the following documents. The strategic plan and our PS 2021 document was certainly a driver. But I think most significantly was your recently adopted, just a few moments ago, school committee goals um, under their, certainly the, the area of financial and asset management and, and under budget. Uh, there's a lot of similarities between the, the 10 items you just went over and listed under budget in your overall school committee goals with what we have kind of drafted and put together here for review um, for fiscal year 19, 2019 budget goals. Um, we also included the fiscal year 2018 budget goals um, in the packet that were adopted last year. So we kind of followed that same template and, and format. And there are certainly some similarities between the goals last year and a lot of, some of them were certainly recommending that we kind of continue to review and evaluate or expand some of the things that we have had on there in the past. Um, first and foremost, um, the first couple goals listed for recommendation are goals that are certainly were, have been there in the past. Uh, support year three of NRPS 2021, so fiscal year 2019, as you know, will represent um, year three of the strategic plan document. Um, under bullet number two within that goal, I think that's really uh, speaks to what uh, was just identified in your overall goals between budget and educational program in terms of some of the focus of hiring identified personnel and expanding foreign language and STEAM and um, high school class sizes and student support services with an elementary special education team chair and digital learning specialists um, and so forth. So a lot of the same themes and, and, and goals are identified here. Um, you talked about maintaining commitment to upkeep school facilities. We've had that there in the past and we think it's certainly important to continue that and as you've referenced as, as well in your, your school committee goal, goals that you just approved. Um, so you know, advocate for funding to support buildings and grounds maintenance needs. We just spoke to the, the needs of all um, four campuses and particularly in the needs of, of, of this building as well as the three elementary schools. So that certainly needs to be a focus. Um, evaluating the food service program was certainly similar in, in, in both sets of goals. Um, as you know, we certainly need to operate a self-sufficient program. There's no general fund subsidy this year and we need to certainly keep an eye on that as we move through this fiscal year and look towards developing the fiscal 2019 budget. <clears throat> Goal number four was something we had uh, begin last year and we, we feel it's important that we further expand community awareness around the budget process through the use of multimedia. Multimedia certainly means um, you know, use through the school website, use through the certainly my own Twitter account, use through the certainly the, the videos that we began last year and, and various updates around the budget process. Michael, one, um, one thing on that that um, I'll ask you to do this year is when, when you put a new video up or something new, a new presentation up on the website, just let me know and then I'll make sure it gets on the sure. North Reading Community Connection. Yep. And I mean, people, that's where they're gonna see it. Or, you know, they'll see it there, then they'll go to the, the, the page. The page, yeah, no, ab absolutely. No, I, I could definitely do that. And I think those were received fairly well last year. I think mm -hmm. the Yeah, I think they were really good. Participated, I think they felt like it was some informative information. They were able to kind of view it at their own time. And um, if there were follow-up questions on anything they heard, I, I know I got myself or, uh, Mr. Bernard got, got some emails on it and we developed some, some healthy dialogue um, you know, throughout the process. Um, number five was updating the five-year capital improvement plan. So you just voted on that this evening. Um, so that is certainly well within on its way. Michael, can I ask one question? Could yes. We only approved three years, should it be? Well, we, we approved three years because that's what the CIPC is looking for, but the, the plan that was included in your packet last week that okay, had actually had five yeah, years, okay. went, out, went out and did an additional two years. Um, number six, we've had on this in the past. I think it's, it's also referenced in your, um, your budget, your school committee goals as well, under budget, and I think it's important that we continue to, to stay informed and um, for the administration to update the committee on, on impacts of the federal and state unfunded mandates. So I think we had 
a lot of good work started with that a few years ago with putting together a document and just continuing to update that document as new information has come to light. It will be an important part of the process. Um, one thing that we've fallen short of the last few years, which I think needs to certainly be a big part of the conversation this year around budget development is the committing to the restoration of school and department operating budgets, uh, mainly the expense budgets at the, at the five schools. Um, continuing to make efforts to manage unforeseen costs is budget goal number eight. Um, certainly we know the challenges in this Michael, area. On that area, did, um, do we know yet what the percentage is going to be for the circuit breaker next year? We uh, do not. So that you know, we wouldn't know. They wouldn't publish a figure for fiscal 19 until the governor releases his budget. Um, we had seen talk, you and I went back and forth. We that did, there was, yeah. There may be a reduction, but then I saw the the House, and I think the House and Senate, or at least the House, overrode the governor's vetoes. So I don't know if that's Yeah, so they, connect. the DESC, anyway, they're comfortable publishing a 65% number right now for circuit breaker. They actually posted the initial uh, calculation for fiscal 18 at 65%, which was a little surprising because we were, I think during the budget process, we had, had bumped it up to 70, 70 yeah. thinking that it was level funded in the governor budget, but then the, the House and the Senate kind of put some little bit more money to, the, to, the, yeah. um, to that program. It's a program that generally gets support. So I'm hoping that gets adjusted as we move through this fiscal year, given um, you know, if they get a little bit less extraordinary relief claims by different districts, they might release a little bit more money. Um, but I think it's fair to say if that amount holds, the, we would lose about $45,000, and that, that impact would be felt in fiscal 19 over fiscal 18. Um, so it is, it would have an impact. So something we have to do, pay kind of close attention to. Um, but for really for 19, we won't really know until, until Jan end of January. Okay. Um, number nine, again, is very similar to what we just spoke of. I think, you know, continuing to evaluate impact of, of the contributions of fees in our annual budget offsets. I, I think, you know, obviously we know the challenge of, of reducing those fees, but I think it continues to, to need to be part of the conversation as we move forward. Um, and number 10 speaks to what uh, we spoke to, to a few moments ago in your goals, the appointment of a budget and finance subcommittee to work with central office administration. Again, to increase further the school community's awareness of fiscal needs of the district early on in the budget development process. Um, and then goal numbers 11 and 12, again, speaks to um, many of your goals uh, under budget for, um, you know, developing a budget that certainly, you know, supports the needs of all students and developing a budget that's supported by the finance planning team in collaboration. 11 and 12 may not uh, They don't, yeah. Work. They, they don't, <laughs> we actually, we, we might be removed number 12. Yeah, I thought we removed, removed number 12. We removed yeah, 12 our goals. And, and our goals. Well, if you look, if I'm looking at your goals right now, it's, it's under B, there's a there's Oh, it's still there? I thought, I thought we asked that be removed. Oh, I thought, no. I no, thought no, we, we, we collaborate, but we remove specifically the develop oh. a school budget supported by the finance planning team. Oh, I see. Said. Well, in retrospect, that should be our goal. It should be our goal to sell them a budget that they support, that we are... Right, but 11 and 12, I think, are mutually exclusive here. Well, I... I well, but, well that, that, that's why we but, removed but, it. We right. said, we said it, it's not about getting the support of them. It's not about if, doing what we need to do. Not if they adopt 11. Okay, yeah. I right. see that right. now. Right. Not right. if they adopt 11. So I bet perhaps we should develop a school district budget that's, well, collaborate with the finance planning team in development of a school district budget. Um, I don't know, probably even 12 the way it is, because one of these days maybe we'll get them to support the... Uh, Budget right, it should be a goal to develop a budget yeah. that they support. Yeah, I don't think we've done it yet. <laughs> but I just don't know why we took. In it all out. the years I've been involved, I don't. <laughs> we specifically took it because out of I the other. I think we were thinking for this exact yeah. reason. Yeah. But it was it was literally like the same words that we took out before, and that we didn't want to say that, and now we're saying that again. <laughs> well, these are our budget goals. Those are. Our <laughs> yeah. Well, the way it works sometimes, we may want to eliminate cool. eleven and keep twelve in. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what ends up happening. I, I think 10 is, is, should be, I know Cliff, you know, I, I was always an advocate of cutting fees. I think it's not fool's gold, that's a fool's goal. That's, I can't see us ever cutting fees, um, ever. Doesn't seem because like a reality they, right they, now. It, we are so dependent on well, fees now. now. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. we just recently, we raised the third, the third uh, right. sport third for sport. Yeah. within the last Increased couple busing years, a couple of years ago. We wouldn't do it. We considered a parking fee, which thankfully <laughs> sure. went away, but I'm, I'm guessing that we'll probably be seeing that again in the future. 
Um, Are you proposing it again? I suppose we could keep. Yeah, right. <laughs> I can propose it since. Oh, well, never. Mind. Jerry can propose it. He's not. I, mean, I think it's good it, to says, right? to bring to light the the reliance. I guess we can on keep it, it there. The process. We can um, keep it there. I think we can. I think we can keep it. I, mean, I just like consistency. And if we, if we removed it from the other document, I don't know why we would remove it here. I I agree. So if it's removed, you could, how about if you on item eleven? Yeah. Added a, after the word district at the end, if you added a semicolon that said, you know, In seek, seek the support of. That's better. Yeah, that's good. Seek the support of the finance planning team, right? For this. Or work with the work with the collaborate. collaborate yeah. With the finance. Yeah. Or or, or, achieve, or you could add that's after achieved. district achieved through collaboration with the finance planning team. They don't necessarily have to be mutually exclusive. You named, no, you they, named right. all of the boards. Board they have been finance, town the administrator, and town's yeah. director of I finance. That, yeah. So I don't know if you want to just kind of copy that same thing. Achieve with the collaboration of yep. the, and then we'll just take it right from your right goals there. document. Yeah. You got that? I got that, yep. Okay. Okay. Those, those four boards. That, that does look a little cleaner, I think. Are there any, one of the things I was wondering, and I don't know if we need to put this in the goals, John, this goes back to the conversation that you and I had with Brad Jones earlier this year, in terms of if we had any kind of special projects that we could talk to him. I mean, there's a risk. There's always a risk here because he could get something put in the budget, the state budget, mm -hmm. and it gets cut. And also the other risk, the other thing is, he said usually they're looking for the town to make about 50% of the commitment for the cost I, of something. Mm, okay. I, I don't know if we want to put something in here about um, you know consult with. Um, our state um, represent, uh, led, representative and senator uh, regarding potential projects for inclusion, um, you know, special projects for inclusion in the state budget. I don't know if that makes sense as a goal. I mean, it hurts. I, I, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, I have no problem. So you guys can word it, you know, the yeah. way you want to word it. Okay. But, because I think that that's that's something we should consider. I mean, if we if we see something yeah. that could be something for the the technology. That could be one of the areas for potential technology funding. Okay. Is I think we can. I think Brad. we can frame something to capture that. Okay. Anybody else have any comments on the? Only um, one question. In 2019, it says it support year three, and 2018 was support year one. Yeah, I was wondering. About yeah, we, 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 we picked, picked up, up on, on that, that. Okay. in this in the new document. It was an error last year. Oh, last year, so yeah. so it is year three. Right. Year two got no support. It was a terrible year for the strategic plan left out there hanging on its own. Um, you know, my main goal would be uh, find an unlimited source of funds to uh, fund everything. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, can you write that down? <laughs> Scott, do you have something else? No. Oh, okay. Anybody else have anything else? So can I have a motion to approve the 2019 budget goals as amended? So move. We can clean that up. Oh, that was, that was a tie. That was a tie. Was a tie. I'm going to give it to um, Julie because Janine got one earlier when it's almost that a tie. Really so, Julie, motion by Julie, second by Janine. Mm. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? You. Okay. Now, contract negotiations representatives. We have our the NREA contract ends the end of this school year, the end of this fiscal year. Correct. And we need to negotiate a new contract, normally a three-year contract. Um, Jerry and I have, I believe we've negotiated the last three, correct? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to like learn the last time, but you can only have two school committee people in there. At so, time, so I don't want to, I don't want to exclude anybody from wanting to volunteer to do this. However, I would be interested in doing it again. Um, I would step aside if anybody else is interested in doing it. So, no, seriously, if anybody else is interested. The thing about the negotiations is, um, you know, our attorney plays the lead role, not you or you, not you attorneys, our attorney, the school <laughs> department attorney. The real attorney. The real attorney, yeah. Our attorney plays um, the lead role, but, um, for better or worse, sometimes uh, worse, the school committee members kind of set the tone of the negotiations. Well, I, I think I think the school committee members definitely set the tone. I mean, we've always had the superintendent in there. Last last time around, John, oh, we, right. had Michael and uh, Patrick in there, and it was very helpful. It worked out very well. You know, we had kind of a a brain trust in there that we we could uh, rely on, and Michael would be able to bring up data right at his fingertips right. there, particularly when we we're doing number mm -hmm. crunching and. 
and we're trying to get the salary schedule in place and everything else. Right. So I thought that was a good, effective team approach because generally they have their negotiator plus seven to eight members uh, of the negotiating right. team in there. Right. Um, in the past, it was really the two school committee members that kind of really spearheaded it, but um, it's more of a collaborative effort now. The the and to re to review the last contract, I think was significant because we kind of we finally standardized, I'll say, our teacher contract, which used to have these weird this weird set of incentives and didn't really have lanes and it had yeah the lanes and, and the credits the credit system we had was unique. It was I'll archaic, say. To say yeah, it was okay. It has been a goal of mine for. Everyone. 15 years to right. try to get a salary schedule that was consistent with what other districts did, and we finally were able to do it last year, right. about three years ago. Uh, so that worked out really well. So that's in place. Right. That's in place. The hard work is done. I, th I think, well, yeah. that was that was, that was, a, that was a big one. That was a, <laughs> yeah. that was a big one. That right. was a big one. Uh, and it really came out the way we envisioned it, I think, too. So. Yeah, right. I think so. Yeah. When, when do you usually have the meeting? In the uh, late afternoon, always. Yeah. mid to late afternoon. I think that's the goal this year. Is yeah. yeah. The teachers like to be after, able to come right after, right. after school. dismissal time. Yeah. We had a few that went later into the night, we but did. usually that's because Jerry and I were causing problems that made the meetings last longer. But I mean, how many are? That, that, I'm just trying to think because I am involved. I have some interest. Yeah. In doing it, but I'm a little bit concerned about the. How many time. are there? There can be. I would 10 say to 20. As, yeah, well, yeah, I'd say at least. Probably ten. I mean, like two to three a month. It's yeah, 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 yeah. It's a tedious process because you're not only going through the, a few months. the financial aspects of it, but you're also going through the you know administrative. And I know John's going to probably have a, a list of things. We've he wants we've to already get. started to ideally file. you get it done in six months. Mm -hmm. Ideally, yeah. it can. Mm -hmm. In the past, it's gone. Well, we've only had one. I one that in went the last 18 years. The one that's really gone beyond. Right, went into the next school the year. Contract. Right. That was eight years ago. That's good. Yeah, no, no that, that was. Ago, I think was that. Ago. It wasn't the one I did. It was before I was yeah. involved. Yeah. yeah. That, that was. was that was. That's that was the, the only one that really outside. got out of control. I think you know. But um, it's it's a challenge. I mean, there's a lot of time involved. There's a lot of homework involved, and uh, you know, it's um, you're dealing with people that you see and. You don't know. Yeah, that's the the most difficult part of it is you usually know teachers that are on the negotiating team who you respect a whole lot, and then you're, you're kind of, it's, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable sometimes. And you're, you're, your perspectives are really very far apart. Exactly. When you go in there, so. Right. You know, the, the... And then we have Claudette or whatever the hell her name is who represents um, what's the teacher. She's no longer. She's not? Really? No, she's no longer with no threading. Really? Camille. Wow. Camille. Camille. Camille's no, so we're going to have a new representative this year? Correct. Oh, jeez. Jill's, not, Jill's not coming back, is she? Jill's <laughs> you know? is Jill coming back? No, no. It's, I, I, it's a gentleman. Ted, uh, Ted Lewis is his name. Oh, I've really? met him wow. two times now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, could I ask one question? What contracts are up the following year? None. None. See, that'd be my only concern. The year after, there's... The year after would be the secretary, everybody, custodian, but, yeah. except well, food. My service. only concern is depending upon the future of the committee. Yeah. If again, I, that, that just thinking ahead about you know so, whether this would be a good learning experience. So here's what here's what I'll here's what I'll say. So. The first time I did the negotiations, I hadn't. There was no there was no learn. I mean, you the law the, the attorney plays a much bigger role today, our attorney, than they did, I think, 9, 12, 15 years ago. They kind of lead the whole thing. And you know, we kind of set the tone, and he asks us for input. But he can be the hard guy. You know, he can be the, you know, he doesn't have any relationships with these people, right? Mm -hmm. John's laughing when I said he can be the hard guy. Sometimes we, we can be the hard guys too, but. Is, is that why he plays the main role now? Because you two have been negotiating it. <laughs> we've, we've established such bad. No, actually, I mean. When you, when you negotiate a contract and then they vote to have you stay outside the room, it makes it <laughs> No, we've always had very good representation. Yeah. We have, we've had, since I've been here, we've had very, very, same firm. I, Yes. Pretty much. Yes. And we've had great representation. I would agree. Um, I mean, I would, I would say, and again, if Scott, you really want to do it, and I, I'd be willing to not do it, um, but I really would like to do it. I would like to see Jerry and I. <laughs> I know I'm equivocating here to finish up 
But if and uh, believe me when I tell you, if somebody wants to do it, speak up. Speak up. I, I, I'm on the fence. I mean, I, I don't really hear the way. If we think it'll be better no for. Interest. I have an interest, but I'm not sure. I'm. If you have an interest, no, go. I think you be good probably compliment. be better off. I'd be a good compliment with Mel. Believe me, John and Michael and Patrick are veterans now, so they did the last one. So. It, yeah, it, we had a number this year. But, yeah, you know so. I mean, again, if, if other people want to do it, I'm, I'm just saying it's a, it's, um, this, this is what I'll say about it. It's a grind. It gets in your head. It is, um, can be psychologically damaging. <laughs> At least to me, it can it's be. It's not just the seven or eight teachers in negotiating. No, it's the whole, right. Because right, they tell exactly. everybody else. They tell everybody else. <laughs> and you kind of walk around the school <laughs> like this when you. I don't care. And people walk by you when you go <laughs> Why didn't they say hello? I've never seen anyone interact with you guys like that. Okay. I, I will say this. I, I will say this. I do think the school committee members, um, in, in the past, in my experience, have taken more of the the animosity than the superintendent, because the superintendent has That's to maintain right. a relationship. So we kind of become the bad guys to mm -hmm. a certain extent. Would you agree with that, John? I, I, I've only shield. been through it once, and yeah. I, I did see it. We then. try to shield yeah. right. know, the, the administrations, because they you, have to work you, with these you people did. every day. So. Um, and it's not hard for Jerry or me to be the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was easy to be the bad guys. I've done five of them. I mean, uh, so I'm not seeing a consensus here. And I don't want to. Oh, I'm willing to do it, but I don't want to get in the way of anybody else. Do. I mean, I, whatever people yeah. think. I mean, because as a committee, we're going to have to formulate some goals as far sure. as what we want to do. Right. Yeah. I mean, my my concern is more about the future than about this one. I mean, I'm happy to do you know defer to you, the the experts on this. But if there's no contracts next well, year, well, I think in the future again, John don't. and yeah. Michael, who I anticipate are going to be here along with Patrick, they they know Can the we routine. Film it? They know the routine. <laughs> <laughs> there's no contracts next year, but as I said, there's all of them, but the teachers in two years. Yeah, and I mean, and then right, there's well, there's, that, well yeah. you do have a food service one, correct? Yeah, food service is a little off. Oh, are they next year? We Schedule. just did it last year, didn't we? So, um, year before. That would be funny if they filmed so it. So that might be a better place to, oh. to <laughs> cut your teeth. You might well, I'm just wondering, because I, I, I keep <laughs> going into something, if, if I'm responsible, I've never because the others two new people going in doing it. But the others don't have the attorney support. Yeah. And that's Power, the, of, of all the others, the powers is most challenging. the most similar to the teachers. But, they, but the other ones don't have the attorneys. None of them do. No, but they're very... Yeah. Now, I won't say only, they're only easy, the next year. but I mean, that would be my, well, only the teachers do. So food service is actually next year, because we did this a year, we did this I'm saying a year a early. To, like, kind of get the well, process that's done. That's, right. that's my concern, yeah. Yeah. depending yeah. on who's on the committee. And I, I do think the finance committee and the, um, I mean, I the board of select and scrutinize what you do as well. I mean, mm -hmm. they're looking at it very closely as well. Yeah, the food service is FY17 yeah, through FY19, which means we're negotiating next year. They cut your teeth as well get with the food service. I mean, Janine has done a couple, right? Janine's I've done the on, yeah. I've done the custodians, the food. So she's got. Julie yeah, did, done Julie did the secretaries. secretaries. Right. I'll you do it as long as you run again. <laughs> you did the power professionals. <laughs> There's a condition. So look, <laughs> the uh, custodians. As well. I'm going to be perfectly honest here, without, <laughs> I, and I've already said it, without um, trying to block anybody. I would like to do it again with Jerry, I but have again. I no problem with you. I think everyone would be in agreement with that. And I think, Scott, given your fine uh, negotiation tactics, in two years when you have to do four contracts. <laughs> when I have not, to do no, four contracts. No, not you personally. But it's not like it's. OK. I'm happy to defer to Jerry. OK, I, I have a okay. comment. OK, time. <laughs> do you feel the two of you representing the school department, do you feel the last negotiation, whatever could have transpired, is kind of the tone no no because we have a new president of the union we pretty, i think yeah. pretty much new and it, yeah and it came together it came together well and okay. that's my impression i mean I've there, there were i mean it, it got it got um it got a little bit contentious yeah for yeah, one meeting for one for, meeting okay for so. good reason <laughs> well we would, have, we would have to take some responsibility <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah jerry it wasn't necessarily my proudest moment so <laughs> 
But anyway, I, again, you can disagree without being disrespectful. Yes, you can. You can. Yes, you can. So. Unfortunately, Jerry and I haven't learned that skill in life. Like, well, some people can. <laughs> So anyway, that's, I, I don't know where to leave this. If someone wants to make a motion, someone doesn't want to make a motion. I mean, are, you, will, are you going to be able to fulfill through I, the I, con contract? I, I will, but I just, like I said, I don't want to step yeah. in front of anybody else that wants fine. to do it. I mean, believe I mean, me. The other good thing is Jerry's the only one that can control Mel a little bit. Too. <laughs> I think so it's just the opposite. The opposite. <laughs> so you're going to run again. You haven't seen him. <laughs> So you're going to have the contract wrapped <laughs> up before April? Yeah, we'll have no, April. before May. 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 That would be our goal anyway. That was, I, oh, think yeah. we, I think we did last yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. All right. Then I don't have a problem. Yeah, we were good. Yeah, 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 yeah we were good. Yeah, we covered a lot last year. But yeah. if it runs over, you have to run again. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that would be too easy. We could make that happen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Stretch it out. Start meeting in yeah. April. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Well, that, that would actually make them want to agree to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. We have we have that. That's a great bargaining card chip right there. Look, if you guys don't agree, Jerry might run again. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, I think that's good. Someone want to make a motion? Uh, I move to appoint Mr. Webster, Chairman Webster, and Vice Chair Venezia to the. Contract negotiation as our contract negotiation representative for the North Reading School Committee's what is it with the North Reading yeah, Education NREA. Association contract. Second. It's your last chance, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Can you put a body cam on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want no part of that. And John, you've contacted, <laughs> you've reached out to Peter Kane already, correct? So I did about. Um, maybe just about two weeks ago and he was going to speak with his folks and I explained to him um, in an email what I thought if we could have a preliminary meeting just kind of an introductory with all the parties to establish meeting dates and that type of thing that's all we're looking for initially and Liam would be there at that that's the hope because I need him to map out his calendar too so Liam's aware of that so I had indicated to Peter that whatever dates he offered to me make them at least two weeks out from the time he offers them to me so I can make sure that everybody can clear their calendars to be at that meeting. So okay. his last communication to me midweek last week was that he would expect it to be back in touch with me soon. Okay. Jerry. But I think you'd rather start earlier than later. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next we have the minutes. Yes. Um, I have a question. Can we put the executive and open session on the same document? I don't, do they have to be separate? You should only have a, an open session meeting tonight. But it, it mentions the executive session. Right. The minutes aren't here, though. We don't have the minutes, though. Correct. OK. Um, it also on the executive session, it doesn't say what time we entered executive session, because we opened at an open meeting at 5.07. But I don't see where it says when we went into executive session. Yeah, on the, it was at the 5 .07. It's here. But the motion was right at the start. You started. No, five. We didn't we start an open, or did we were an executive from the beginning? No, you started, started an executive, executive session. It was it was scheduled for five o'clock. Okay. And then you did that. Wait, to think, he's saying the call to order an open session was five o seven. Right. And it says, but then it doesn't say. At five. It's called the order open session five o seven. Right. Yep. But then it doesn't it say. It was going when they went into executive. It doesn't say what time we went into executive oh, does session. It, does it usually? Yeah. I thought it was one and the same. I'm the new one, so. <laughs> Don't forget. And then you go into open session. I defer to you because you love to. Okay. I mean, you basically opened the meeting and went into executive right. session. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Other than that, I found no other, no errors in the minutes. So, uh, accept a motion for the minutes for the open session on September 11th, 2017. Make a motion to accept the regular meeting of the school committee minutes from September 11th, 2017. I'll second that. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Next we have a budget update. Michael? Yes, thank you. So in your packet this evening was the, the first fiscal 
2018 budget update of the fiscal year. And it essentially is reflecting um, financial activity through um, about in the middle of September. Um, and again, as is our practice, it, the report is reflected into two pages, both through expenses and payroll activity. On the expense side of um, the ledger, I think things are we're off to sort of a solid start. Um, as we've been able to achieve in the past, we, as you recall, in the end of fiscal year 2017, we exceeded the amount we had budgeted in special education prepayments. So we have a little bit of flexibility in, in this area should we uh, anticipate and ha come up with any unanticipated expenses um, and need to address any unanticipated costs. Um, the Michael, let me, let me ask you a question on that. So you showed tuition, for, um, special ed tuition for the fiscal 18 budget at 1,464,427. Mm -hmm. Is that minus the money that we prepaid or does that include the, what's prepaid in that number? So that amount that's the original allocated budget includes minus the amount we budgeted for prepay, which is $125,000. So, so is the, our cost really almost $1.6 then? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, but then we actually achieved closer to, you know, 280000 Oh, okay. That's why we have that extra level of, of flexibility. All right. Um, as you can see, we've already had some additional, you know, costs arise that we've encumbered and committed to, and that's, that's why there's a balance there, um, okay. providing that additional level of, of flexibility. Um, most other, um, certainly expenses, um, as you can see, the schools are just starting to, you know, still in the process of encumbering funds and completing many of their orders. Um, but we have encumbered all utility expenses and we'll again, we'll monitor these costs for utilities closely throughout this fiscal year. Um, as was the case last year, I think we're certainly seeing that a benefit of the energy management contract with automated logic. We were able to, you know, certainly occupy and set the occupancy schedules through different areas of the building throughout the summer months, which we, we've achieved a level of savings on. Uh, we continue to be pretty aggressive in participating in RMLD's peak uh, reduction, you know, demand program, and um, we're seeing a benefit by, by you know, on the utility uh, end of things by those two initiatives. Um, the report speaks to a little bit um, what we were talking about, I think, earlier in the meeting. Um, we've, you know, we're already seeing um, some maintenance needs come up at both this this building and this campus, as well as throughout the district and you know, throughout the summer months just to make sure everything was, was ready for the start of school. So, you know, we're seeing that plumbing, that HVAC, heating, cooling, and, and boiler um, repairs needed. You know, nothing alarming, but it's just, I think it's just fair to say that we have a lot of equipment on both at this campus that's highly technical, and uh, certainly the elementary school's equipment is certainly a little bit, certainly older. So, you know, we're just seeing a need to expend some, some, some funds to make sure everything is continuing to be operating um, efficiently. On the payroll side, um, we once again experienced, you know, a busy summer filling staff vacancies. Um, as was the case in 17, we did budget a relatively aggressive, you know, teacher attrition ratio. So I think you may be seeing um, the, you know, the funds available projected balance at this point in the year and some of the, the teaching so, you know, salary line items is a little bit, you know, certainly tighter and maybe less than it was in the past, but certainly at the moment things seem to be very close to the budgeted line items on the salary side. We are already seeing the need to appoint some long-term substitutes. Uh, we, we're seeing that uh, need arise and it seems to be like that's trending upward at the start of this year, so that will be important that we monitor that and see what impact that may have on our substitute budget and so forth. Um, but I think overall, I, I, you know, I think we, things are, are off to a, a solid start and, um, you know, things are certainly, you know, you know, you know sound but, but, but tight at the, at the same time and we'll have to pay close attention to every line as we move throughout the, the budget, uh, uh, the fiscal year. Any, any questions? Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Next, we have <coughs> staffing. No staffing. I, I do have a couple. Oh, you do? Chairman, yes. Okay. It's, uh, this, we had a late summer hire of a special education paraprofessional at the middle school, uh, Corin McCarthy. 
Um, we also hired recently um, to fill a vacancy within the uh, business education department, Michael Callahan, who is actually going to be doing some uh, digital learning specialist work for the district. And very happy to announce as well, uh, Gina Sacco has been uh, selected to serve as the replacement for Kristen Burke, who um, left her position as the coordinator of elementary special education. Gina, some of you might know Gina is a, was a teacher. Uh, is a teacher right now. She'll be starting her new duties uh, next Monday, October 2nd. But so she's been a she's a, been a veteran special education teacher here, um, is appropriately licensed, did a very nice job. We had quite a bit of interest when we advertised the job. I think we had 17 applicants. A number of folks were interviewed, and um, in the end, um, Gina was our was our selection. So I think she's great. She was on the subcommittee when we hired. Um, I believe she was on the subcommittee when we hired the director of um, people personnel services and and so me. I got to work with you. She was on the interview committee. Right. For the oh, for you. Right, search. exactly. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. Really. So we've had, we've got a little bit of internal. We've got a little, to no, no, I didn't. We had a little bit of internal shuffling going on um, to fill the vacancy. Um, we had a high school teacher express interest in um, taking Gina's position, Michaela Rich, at the middle school. So we're currently, uh, again, this is all supposed to take place next Monday. Um, we're currently um, searching to fill that high school special education teacher replacement. So. But I think we're, we're looking forward to uh, having a jo her join the administrative ranks. Great. Congratulations, Gina. Okay, after a one week, one meeting hiatus, we have a bid and donation. Only one tonight, though. Only one tonight. Yeah. Anybody want to take this? Okay. Good. Second. For the discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Subcommittee updates. What subcommittees do we need to be updated on? <laughs> Athletic subcommittee. Uh, Mr. Vanessi was not there. I, was <laughs> I had no idea what we discussed. Yeah. That's why um, we time. actually, we. Uh, One around athletic facilities. We discussed the numbers, um, 348, which uh, Bridget also mentioned, tonight, number of athletes, which is actually down a little bit from last fall. Not, not much, but down right. a little bit. Um, and then we spent a lot of time on facilities, not only the restroom uh, and concession stand, but also um, the facilities in general, how they're holding up, the all purpose field, maintenance of the facilities. Um, everything seems to be um, going well. I will say, and I had a discussion with both Wayne and Marty about this, and I actually experienced it myself. There, there's some issue at the, tur at the new all-purpose field. One area is staying wet. And, and Marty explained it by the drainage stops like halfway across the field. There's no drainage on the, on the, uh, on the far end of the f far side of the field toward the really? turf field. How wet, Mel? Last week when I stepped on it, it was like, like soggy, really? wet. And a couple of coaches had mentioned it to me, so I, I went over there to check. Marty said he was gonna work um, with Wayne's staff to adjust the amount of watering. Um, How big an area is it? It's like a strip, yeah, I'd say, it's not, right? It's not very yeah, wide. Yeah, it's not it's huge, but yeah, it's long. And I think it's, it's because of the way the drainage is set up. I, I don't understand it, but- The field looks great. One area, the water is like going right through the drainage. All right. The other area, it's Run kind it of off. puddling. It's, yeah. So it's not a big issue. Um, it's not like soaked wet. No. You're gonna ruin the field, but it's it's wet. So it's a little. So it, I think it's just something we'll have to work on, and, and we'll get it right. Yeah, at, people at are point. aware of it. Right. Mm. Right. It could be about modifying the timing of the irrigation for that zone. Correct. And then we um, we did spend some time on the. Um, the concession stand and restroom facility. They were down there today, by the way. They were supposed to shut the electricity off last Thursday. Right. That happened. That did happen. Yeah. On the 21st. And there's. Final bill. We did, yeah. yeah. There is a ch They already sent a bill, huh? We, had, we yeah. have the final bill from the uh, heater, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, the final bill. Oh, and then there's a chance, if they get the permit, that the concession stand will be demolished next week, correct? They were down there setting up the fence today. Correct. Were they? Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, they want to get That was their plan, so yeah. they, right. they were due here today. So they want to get that fence set up. Um, once the building is demolished, they'll then do the infrastructure work and um, pour the foundation and the goal. We, we had a second meeting. Were you, were you there, the second meeting yeah. with the, 
um, with the contractor. Yeah. And um, he's still confident by mid-November they'll be done and out of there. And by February, January, February time frame, we'll have the building on the, yeah. on the foundation and be able to use it for the spring season. Do you want to mention about the power or lack of right. temporary power? So there were, there were, you know, it turned out, there's always surprises, right? There were like six things, seven mm -hmm. things tied to the, um, the power box in there, including the sound system for the baseball team. I think the, um, the sign out front of the school. The uh, uh, message boards. The message yeah. board uh, on, uh, cr next to the turf field, right by the fence. The, uh, a couple of lights. Flagpole. The flagpole light. light. Spotlight. Right? Spotlight. And the scoreboard, baseball scoreboard, and I don't know if the um, the concession stand, the baseball ticket booth concession. Yes, because that was tied to the sound. Yeah. So, when they disconnected that, they said, "Do you need these temporarily connected?" And we said, "Well, it'd be nice. We don't need every, we don't need the baseball scoreboard. We don't we don't need all of those things, and most of those things we don't need until the spring. But we said it'd be nice to have the flagpole light." And the cost to um, temporarily and connect the board. in the message board, the cost to temporarily connect was like eleven thousand dollars. So no, 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 like sixty one hundred. Well, whatever it was, but it, it was it was. Six, in, I thought it was more than that. No, because we thought we talked about it being half the cost of the the brick yeah, facing. Brick. Yeah. <laughs> and we immediately said, uh, keep the lights. We on. don't need to spend sixty one hundred dollars <laughs> for that. So there'll be no all those things. There'll be no electricity until the project's completed Correct. by March fifteenth. So I, we, but there's no big issues with that. And we will just refer people to the um, flag at the flag at the batch, the school, yeah, which, the is, which is lighted. Anthem, which is easy. You can probably actually see it better than you can see the flag from uh, at the yes. school anyway, at the field anyway, because it's so low. Um, but no problems. They did, um, you know, one of the things that we'd like to do is put a brick facing on the new building. So it will, it won't exactly match, but it'll look, it'll be really close to the team room, the batch, and the high school. It'll be all brick. Um, there's an additional cost for that, and they, they've told us what the cost is, and what we're hoping is that um, once the, uh, although I don't know if we can wait this long, once the infrastructure is done and we see what kind of um, money we might have to spend out of the contingency fund. Right. But I think one of the things is I know that they have to put a, they have to, the company building the building has to know yeah, but they said we had time, though, Mel. I asked them. Did they? Yeah. Because we got, we are. They, they needed advance notice, yeah, but we had time. We had some time. Okay. If, but I, if we do go in that direction, they'll lead to. But if at all problem. possible, I'd like to do that. It would make it look I, I uh, it a be lot great better. I think we could do that. So, but things are moving along. There doesn't seem to be any issues. Um, no. The company that's doing the building has done a million of these. Uh, so, very confident. Your communication has been right. good with They've been really good. Yeah, they seem good. Yeah. Yeah. Gotten back to us quickly so. with. Yeah. They got back to us really quickly on that temporary. Yeah. Electricity the connection estimate and, yeah. and also on the uh, brick finish. On the brick surface, they did. So yeah, they got the quote pretty quickly. So I think that'll that's be just about it. <laughs> we'll have it, everything done down there. That'll be just about it. Yeah, yeah. just about it. I mean, yeah. maintenance and upkeep so. of the of the of the carpet, which which um, Marty <coughs> Tilton is on top of, and uh, that, that'll be it. It's oh, actually, that was another. We did, dis we did discuss the scoreboard, and one of the issues we have there is the scoreboard's a little more than $6,000, which we, the school department had said we would pay for the scoreboard. But then when we they, we, they gave us a company, they recommended a company for the installation, and the installation is almost $10,000. And we also have a little bit of an issue that came up, too, about the ledge right. out there, and we know where the ledge is. So I think we'd have to. I think we can. That about. I think we can address. It's yeah. the cost for the installation yeah. was yeah. much more than we anticipated. And I, I'm supposed to, and I haven't done it yet. Uh, I'm glad we had this meeting tonight. I need to contact. I'm, I'm going to work with um, youth softball to see if there's any interest in them working with us to right. uh, fund the installation. And uh, athletic director Dave Johnson was going to speak with the softball coach to see if there's any. We actually thought a couple of meetings ago we had the softball people coming into the meeting. Right, they, they didn't that come. That never worked, yeah. that never happened. Right. Well, we, Chuck Carucci was going to pursue. He thought he might have a lead with some of the steel. All oh, right, Chuck was going to. beams. Right. That, yeah, yeah. Chuck quite was, expensive. Chuck said he was going to try to speak to somebody, although Chuck's in, I think Chuck's away now. He is. Um, he is. He's in Italy. He was going to speak <laughs> to a North Reading grad who's in the steel business to see if we might be able, because it's two steel I-beams to hold the, hold the thing up and then a cross of a small cross beam. But that area is right where they did the ledge. Except in right field, right I think. Right field, I think we might be we, I think we that. determined, actually, yeah. that right field would be pretty yeah, much. It's just a matter we have to conduit 
the power. Right, the power. Because yeah. the power is out there now That's at center field, so it's not it's not a big deal. And then we've talked about other equipment. We've talked about a batting cage, batting cages. Dugout um, covers. Dugout covers. But I think we put the scoreboard as the as the first priority. So I think that's about it. We didn't discuss uh, yeah. anything else. I, mean, I think that's right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got the policy subcommittee met on September 14th at 7 a.m. It was exciting. I mean, it was. They were both there. I can vouch At that time of the early. morning, it's got to be exciting to keep you awake, I would think. I mean, it, it was thrilling. Well, no, was I there before you this time? No. <laughs> yes, you were. No, you brought the donuts. That's, yeah, that's right. good. You brought the donuts and Janine was already here. Okay. Oh, because he had a start. That's why you donuts. were running a little I said high. we were both there before I started. Oh, so. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I said before you. Well, so we, we got through 17 more of the 99. MASC. Oh. Janine was there at 7 a.m. She must have slept over there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're up to what, 42, I think now? 25 and 17. So you say up to 42, whether or not we need to um, no change. implement them or make changes or? A, a yeah, lot of them are not. A lot of them are just looking at in our, we either like our policy more or okay. it's basically the yeah, same it's or there's a word or it's just, right. it, yeah, reviewed. But there's we're gonna a have couple that doesn't mind. even mm -hmm. apply to us. Okay. So I, I think if, if, if you are okay with it, both of you, I'll bring forward the ones that we talked about that are in need of a first reading. I think I can have that ready for October 16th meeting. Okay. But they weren't. That it's 42, but there were a number of them that were just yeah. a reviewed. Yeah. Right. Some you didn't feel were either were appropriate or didn't right. correspond with. But then the, there are there is a good number with maybe a first reading. But I don't think any of the changes are super significant. Yeah. And then there's a couple that I have some homework to do for some information to get a legal reference. I think there was a couple that mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to Michael about that had a couple that we held for later too. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think you'll have a, there'll probably be a little bit of business to do around first readings of some policies at the October 16th meeting. Okay. And we already had our report on the secondary school building committee. I don't think there's anything else to <coughs> cover on that. Um, subcommittee <coughs> schedule: finance planning team, September 28th at 8 o'clock. I can make an 8 a.m. meeting. It's okay. hard, but I can make it. Well, that's 8 o'clock, right? That should be a yeah. short one, too. Right. Right. It's that's just to talk would, about town meeting, right? Hour. It's yeah. more for the uh, town, town meeting. Town meeting, so. correct. NORCAM is September 28th at 7 p.m. Athletic Subcommittee, October 17th at 12.30. Policy Subcommittee, October 18th at 7 a.m. And SSBC, October 24th at 5.30. Um, administrative report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So a few things I wanted to call to your attention tonight. Um, the first is I've included for you the latest report on the high school students class of 2017 um, SAT scores, which are, are, again, I think very encouraging. There continues to be a pattern of growth. Um, the chart looks a little bit different than what you're used to because of the the adjustment to the SAT that was administered for the first time last year, um, last spring. So the scores have been adjusted accordingly to reflect um, that change in the new table of the evidence-based reading and writing. I can tell you there's really not, you don't have a good comparative data there because the chart below it for the, for the year 2016 with the, with the number of 551, it really is not a fair apples to apples comparison. But what I can tell you is that Statistically, we're about mm, a little over 7% ahead of the state and about 10% ahead of the national average. John, did they, did they still offer the writing as an optional it test? It is, and that's why, that's why this, this chart exists in the way it does, because that was not the, the case with the critical reading before. Okay. The, the essay is an option now. Okay. On the back page is the math, which is more of, a more, uh, more of an apples to apples comparison, so I think you can interpret that in the same way. Mm -hmm. We have uh, nine, nine point growth from uh, 2016 to 2017. First glance, it seems pretty good. It's hard to when you can't compare it to the benchmark communities. Yeah, you'll have that in the future. But I think I did a percentage calculation because that was the best thing I could come up with to show you. Um, and I thought those numbers. I think it's like seven point four percent ahead of the state, and I think it's nine <coughs> point something, nine point two, if I'm not mistaken, or something. Yeah, because if you look at the math, I mean, even though we're up nine points, if you look at the differential between the state and uh, and North Reading yeah. High School, we're up significantly more. They're than both. That. They both went down. Yeah. So. So, so some good news there. I do believe, as, as is traditionally what happens, Maureen, uh, the transcript comes in and does an interview with um, the high school principal. I think Maureen already did. So there'll probably be something in the paper about it on 
on Thursday. Yeah, you know, math were about eight percent out of the state and twelve percent had national. Yeah. yeah. So on the math, yeah. Right. Yeah, the the, the other numbers were, we're just forty three points higher in seventeen, and we were only twenty four. And uh, right. Mm. I did some comparative analysis, too, for the area, which I don't always like to do, but I know that sometimes that's a good little data point, and we fared very like well. like to do if the results are good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Well, I, you know, it's, but I feel very good about where we are in the work that, that's going on. So um, in any case, I, thought I, I traditionally share that with you, and I wanted you to have a call. And, and I know you can't, it's not apples to apples, but 595 seems. Yeah. Be a really high yeah. score on yeah. the evidence-based reading and writing. Right, I, I agree. Compare it with the state mill, same right. thing. You know, so eight percent again. But it's all. I like to keep it all in check because I know it ebbs and flows with student populations mm -hmm. changing and so. But it is. It is. Some, the there is some good population. news there. Yeah. So. I thought it was important for you to have um, the the next piece of correspondence, which is the. Um, so, just if I could introduce by way of introduction of what this is. This is. North Reading High School went through its accreditation process with the New England Association of Schools and Colleges in 2014. As part of that process, schools are required to submit a two-year report. The high school submitted that two-year report in 2016. Based on that report, there was one item that they held out as wanting a progress report on the next year. And then there will be a five-year report in 2019. That's all very standard for the NEASC process. This, this report, which is very brief, um, addresses the one uh, bulleted item, one recommendation that came out of the two-year um, reports evaluation by NEASC. It's a very favorable report. Um, it looks a little bit longer because in the back, the last four or five pages, five I think, are some supportive data that they asked for and how it is that we are presenting to families, students and their families about um, students' level of achievement to our school-wide expectations, which is the last page of the packet. This is not a new practice. This has been um, this has been, well, it was, it, was, it was going on, I think, in preparation for the 2014 visit, so it's at least uh, four years old now. Um, and we do track, what you're seeing is the data, the data that's supplied, these are actual correspondences that go home with students' report cards um, from the high school to show how their children are, are um, measuring up against their peers in, in terms of meeting the school-wide, um, the expectations of the school-wide rubric. So I thought it was important for you to have. There was also some interesting data around, because um, this all centers on advisor advisee programs, this one bullet, and I think there's some interesting data in the next to the last paragraph of the first page around a survey that was, um, that was administered. So. The third thing I want to just remind all of you is, that, and, and I, you know, I, I know that the, that the school department and the community um, appreciated the, the, the strong presence of the school committee at the um, plaque dedication for Ellen Adele last week and also at the um, celebration honoring the 100th, I guess, is it an anniversary or a birthday, I guess? It's, always, it's kind of a, mm. probably birthday. an anniversary, is that the right, for the, of the Batchelder School? It was a very nice day, Saturday. It's really only its 98th birthday because it was, op it was, oh, it for two years. Yeah, 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 that's close. true. Yeah, with the uh, Stoneham, the Stoneham yeah. transition. But yeah, there was some there was some nice stories told about that too. Yes. I, thought, I thought Mr. Colleen did a really nice job mentioning that. So, I, I, I'm just reminding you that on October 17th, that's a Tuesday at four o'clock, we will be um, we will be dedicating this this room, the um, the distance learning lab, in honor of, of Dr. Tro, the former superintendent of schools. So we'll be unveiling the plaque that's been installed right outside the door here um, on that day. So I'm, I'm hoping you you can all make it as your schedules allow. And the last thing is, and this was kind of uh, assuming that you were going to adopt this, although I see a typo here, um, that you were going to adopt uh, among your goals, um, kind of noting some of the achievements that go on across the district. I'm going to kind of keep a standing agenda item here in my report about correspondence that comes my way. And the first one that, um, that I, I have to share with you is that the high school was, um, was noted by um, the, United, the Special Olympics um, identifying the high school as a, um, a unified champion school. This, this stems from its work in recent years with the student council partnering with uh, students with special needs and it was nice to see the school recognized for, uh, for their work. So I thought I would share that with you. Great. And that is all I have, Mr. Chairman. Correspondence, nothing, correct? Uh, correct. Before we go into um, future business, I just wanted to raise one thing. Uh, I know it's interesting. There seems to be a big push on it, mask and on it, to uh, change school times. Um, I don't know if very you're following push. that. Oh, very big push. Yeah. Burlington as well. Yeah. 
So uh, I, I know you made, I, I've informed lots of people who say to me, why can't we do this? And I explain the difficulty and I explain how you made a great effort to try to get all of the Cal schools on I, the same I can page. give you a little update on that if oh, can you want to do Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah, the interest waned. It really did. I, I think you know I, I pulled together the, the KPN League superintendents for a series of meetings. Yep. Masco was very much in the lead. Georgetown, I know, has shelved their plan, my, is my understanding. Um, Bill, when you said Burlington, Jerry, that, the, the Middlesex League. Oh, yeah, the uh, whole, right. They did it as a league. Which they was, made a commitment. That, that's what prompted me to pull the Cape Ann League together right. and say, you know, is this something that, that the group would be um, interested in? And I just think that, that, that quite honestly, there was, unless you can do it, across the board, and to me, it's going to be very, very difficult to manage that schedule. Any concession that in a few weeks we turn the clocks back an hour? Uh, <laughs> does that help? The Middlesex lead has made, a Only momentarily. has made a commitment to do it by a certain date, but they still... I think it was next September. I think there's only one or two schools yeah. that may have approved it. Uh, that, may, that may have changed. There, 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 I mean, there would have been... A, had, had we even moved in a positive direction last year to say this is something we want to put on the the horizon for you know a few I think you, you were talking at least two maybe three years out a lot that goes along with it because now you have to change the middle school time <coughs> no you can keep well, the middle school time the same but I don't you have really to change elementary change in the middle school time but I think you might have had to earlier. consider adjusting the middle school the schedule busing. and the high school yeah. schedule well, to be the same for the busing accommodation the issue was I remember when we looked at it many years ago when we were going to need huge. three additional buses and we know how much that costs Correct. yeah but we never even got to that no, point no, no. because I just felt like it, we couldn't do it on an island. You resurrect that whole thing with sixth graders being on the buses with yeah. seniors and all. You, you would have you would have likely had to combine you busing. That. I, I just wanted much. to bring that up because I, I I follow the Masco effort and they they seem to be making a really aggressive effort to. I, I think you're right. My my belief is that it has been a very aggressive effort, but it's been going on for probably three years. And it also has groundwork. to be approved by each of the towns in that tri-town district where the elementary yeah. students go to school in Masco. Yeah, so that regional school, right? Have to so that might be. Um, the other thing I want to mention. But it's not for a lack of interest or trying. In a way, I think we no, should. No, I just wanted to bring it up and maybe yeah, no, someday you, in the future. I'm glad you did. The other thing I wanted to mention. Now I'm going to put Julie on the spot here, but she had sent me. Um, a pretty interesting email that I didn't read the entire document, but was that the our ESSA plan that got approved? The state you sent me that, state. yeah, the state education plan. Yeah, that actually came out in the commissioner, the interim commissioner's newsletter on Friday to me as well. So, plan. do we know what kind of is there? Will, we, the will there be any visible are? changes that? <laughs> I don't think so. I think I think you're going to see. Quite honestly, I'm I'm now interpreting our accountability data because I want to include it in the back of NRPS 2021, like it traditionally has been. And there's there's a there's a lot of hold harmless that is just I think it's going to be kind of one of those years where they're just saying, unless you had a a, a snag around your participation rate that would have would have affected your your level rating, they're pretty much holding you. And oh, and then the high school the high school will have the traditional rating because they haven't done anything differently. Then you're essentially going to be held harmless. Wasn't Russell about adding history or did they see history questions or? That, that has been a, you know, a desire to have yeah. that as a tested subject. It doesn't make sense that it's not, right. in my opinion. But. Right. Okay. But I don't think that there are any far-reaching implications to it. Okay. All right. Next meeting is uh, next Monday night before the town meeting. I don't, we, don't have a lot, we don't have anything, I don't think, on the town meeting warrant that we're specifically involved with, correct? We have no there, warrant. There anything. isn't, mm -hmm. um, but I think it, it probably is worth it. There might be one article there that you might want to think right. about. I don't know how the committee feels about the... Um, there may be an article on the... Uh, the social host. Social host. And there's also an article, I think, <coughs> maybe an article to raise more money for uh, to um, put more money toward the lawsuit. The litigation. Litigation. Fees. Yeah, yeah. Right, the yeah. school. I think they were looking for 150. I maybe think so. 150. I think it's one yeah. 150. I believe it is. It'll last yeah. for the next fiscal year. So that'll be 6.30 at, right. at my office. Then October 16th here at 6.30 and October 30th here at 6.30. Correct. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good night. <laughs>